for later that so you've got the mother for direct uh, excuse me for cross and then miss kirkland for direct and cross so at least an hour and a half i would think this case wasn't supposed to take but two hours you're gonna take an hour and a half and I, 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 I remember when we set this you said you were gonna not put anything on and you were gonna let the whole day be for it so i lied I did. no <laughs> Well, I will say, if, oh, do you think um, do you think we'd be done at least maybe by two? Because I I do recall uh, a mention at least of four hours. Because we better be through by two. We're, we're going straight through lunch. Nobody gets to touch a, a drop of anything or morsel of anything until we finish. Um, except so, maybe. But, have but a I coke. can't have my water, right? <laughs> you can. can't prepare with provisions. <laughs> All right, um, Doctor Hay. Um, you're welcome to sit in the waiting room and you need to stay in the waiting room, but you can go do some other stuff. It's um it's quarter till ten now. So um based on what he said, I think you can expect us to see hopefully see you around eleven thirty. Um I'm sorry, I know that tears up your day, but um okay. <clears throat> no problem. Okay, so we'll look for you in the waiting room between uh, around 1130. Okay. okay. Um, and if we get through, if we prod Mr. Skavronik along a little faster than he estimates, we can call you and see if you can show back up a little okay. early. Proceed. All right. So a couple of preliminary matters, Your Honor. Um, the department would ask the tender into evidence and make part of the record and ask the court to take judicial notice of all of the previous orders involving this Ask child. Those be tendered into evidence and made a part of the record as well. Is that what you have given the clerk as defects TPR exhibit number one? It is, Your Honor, that big, that, big that, document. That three inches thick? Yeah. Ms. Pollard, any objection? Uh, no objection. I didn't, I didn't get that particular big packet, but I do have the individual orders. It's submitted without objection. The court will take judicial notice of its prior orders concerning the parties. All right. Second thing is that the department would tender into evidence with, with marked for identification purposes as defects exhibit number two, which is a copy in lieu of the original of the death certificate of Mr. Tizon Jones, who was the biological and uh, legal father of Chase, who is um, now deceased, and ask that that be tendered into evidence and made a part of the record. Any objection? No objection. No objection. Defects TPR Exhibit 2 is admitted. And then a, a copy of Chase's uh, birth certificate, which is a copy in lieu of the original, um, which is Defects Exhibit Number 3. And then I just, for the record, want to clarify and make sure I'm correct on this. When we were in court, I think it was October 31st, I think, is when we had this uh, case and initially scheduled for a hearing. I um, mean, then Ms. Folliard had just been recently appointed and we reset the matter. I don't know that the mother was, so she was given notice via certified mail by the clerk's office, which is um, sufficient for the statute, I believe. But then I think when we were in court that Ms. Folliard and her client also acknowledged service of the TPR. Does the court re yeah. record reflect that? Yes, they were supposed to um, send both of us a copy of it, which I actually didn't even get a copy of the acknowledgement. But I was in communication via email where they said that they were sending her a copy of the acknowledgement of service. So that that should have been sent back. But I wasn't on the email chain with mom, but we do we do acknowledge service. OK, well, I'm, um, I'm not seeing that um, communication directed to Ms. Puckett. Um, Ms. Puckett, did you get something in the mail about that? Or email? Either one? No, sir. Yes, I can. Well, I, it's, I think it's moot if y'all have acknowledged service on the record and are not challenging that. So um, if the court finds the certified mail for an out-of-state resident uh, sufficient. And um, we've had, tell me your address again, Ms. Puckett, because we've had a number of pieces of mail come back even though we send it to the address you give us in court. Yes, sir. Okay. That's, I mean, I'm looking at a thing that came back, returned to sender, no mail receptacle, unable to forward. Did your apartment complex um, do away with their mail slots? 
if you have them like most apartments where you go to a box, little a big box with a bunch of little boxes. Yeah, they just um they just installed a new mailbox like two weeks ago. Okay. So was there a time where you didn't have a box? It was a time where mail wasn't getting delivered because somebody was making um somebody was breaking in the mailboxes of a residence, so the um US post office was holding mail. Oh, okay. That makes sense. All right. Anything else? Um no, I just just for the record, we're clear that they're um, in the in council for the mother is not contesting any form is that there's uh, insufficient service on this matter, correct? That's correct. Okay. I think that's it, Your Honor. You have another exhibit here, but you're not ready to tender it yet, I assume. No, no, that's my <laughs> not good, Dr. Hayes. So, Your Honor, the department is calling Ms. Puckett, uh, the mother, for purposes of cross-examination. And the child was formerly known as Saul Hales uh, III, I believe. Yes. And how many other children do you have other than Chase? I have five. All right. And two of those children are living with Mr. Uh, Saul, um, with Mr. Saul Hales, correct? Yes. All right. And then two of the children are residing with you in the state of Indiana. Is that correct? Three of the children. Three? Okay. So including Chase. I you have, have three residing with me. You have, including Chase, you have six children yes. all together, correct? Six children. And isn't it true that two of the children that are residing with you in Indiana just recently came back to live with you from the state of South Carolina? Yes. And how long had those children uh, been in South Carolina? My children was picked up by their dad june in 2022 for his parenting time for the summertime and he violated a custody order and withheld my kids for a whole year in south carolina and is that custody case involving those children still ongoing between you and their father yes okay. when is your next hearing date on that case i have a mediation hearing date march 12th is anybody else having trouble hearing her or is it just me it's coming and going mm -hmm. it is a not a consistent signal it crackles I, I hear the crackling when she speaks all right miss Bucket, i want to go through your case plan and some of these questions are going to be slightly out of order um all right where are you currently employed amazon When was the last time that you gave Mr. Turnips to a paycheck sub from Amazon? I believe it was September or October. One of those. I can't exactly be sure. And you've been with Amazon since you, you testified previously in some of the other hearings that we've had that you were with Amazon since May of 2023? Yes. All right. And during that time, you've only given uh, to Mr. Uh, Turnip seed, three paycheck stubs, correct? Yes, I gave him how many? I can't hear what you said. So just to be clear, you only gave him, in the last six months, you've only given three paycheck stubs to Mr. Turnip seed. Yes, correct. Sir. Yes. You had previous to working at Amazon claimed that you were working as a mail sorter with the postal service. Was that in fact true? No, I never claimed I worked there. I did apply for it and I sent Mr. Turner to see the email. So again, I, that, your response was kind of garbled there. I'm going to ask the question again. When you told this court previously that you were employed as a mail sorter with the U.S. Postal Service, was that true? No, I told the courts that I applied and I was waiting on a start date and I sent Mr. Turner seat the email to for confirmation, but I never started.
where and the address that you're living at is that a house, an apartment, a condo, or kind of a residence are you currently living at? Apartment. And what size apartment are you living in? Yeah, I have a two bedroom apartment. Three bedroom or two bedroom, I'm sorry. Two. two. Okay. And who is residing in the apartment with you currently? Me and my three children. Did you tell Mr. Turnip Seed at some point in time that you were looking at or trying to get a larger three bedroom apartment? Yes, I did. And have you provided Mr. Turnip Seed with any proof of your efforts to obtain a larger apartment? Yes. Would it surprise you to learn, Ms. Puckett, that Mr. Turnipsey contacted your apartment complex and they stated you had never asked to upgrade or get a bigger apartment from them? I would object, Your Honor, on the grounds of hearsay, unless they have the someone from the apartment that can testify as to that questioning or whether or not she has, then um, again, I, I, I would object to that being a question requesting hearsay response. I'm going to allow the question, but it, the actual answer. But well, yes, it was a surprise. Yes, it was surprise me because Ms. I sent email. Ms. Bucket, don't, don't interrupt the judge. Let the judge finish. Oh, I'm sorry. I just decided to stop. <laughs> I think she started talking. I'm sorry. I'm going to overrule the objection and allow it in. It, it may end up not being tied up with evidence down the road, and it may not have any probative value, but I'll allow it. So my question was, would it surprise you to learn, Ms. Puckett, that Mr. Turnipseed has contacted your apartment complexes and may have stated that you have not attempted to get a larger apartment? Yes, it would surprise me because I have the emails and I can verify that I indeed talked with several people at my apartment location for several different places in emails. But you've not provided any of that information to Mr. Turnipseed from the department, correct? Yes, I have. I sent Mr. Turnipseed those emails. What's your current rent? How much do you pay per month? Eight thirty-one. I'm sorry, what? Eight thirty one. Eight hundred and thirty one dollars. Yes, sir. Okay. And is are you receiving any kind of uh, assistance in order to uh, for that? Are you getting like a, a lower than market rate rent? Are you getting uh, uh, housing assistance? Are you getting any kind of assistance in order to pay the rent or to have that rate? No, I am not. Isn't it true that previously you were getting some assistance to pay your rent? Yes. Okay. And up until when were you getting assistance to pay your rent? I was in a program and they gave me assistance for a year from 2021 to 2022. Once that year was up, it was my responsibility to pay rent on my own. All right. So again, I'm not sure I follow. When was the last time that you got assistance to pay your rent? Um, I want to say May or June of this year. So May or June of 2023, correct? Yes, sir. Correct. Yes, sir. And you are currently in individual therapy with Dr. Paul. Is that correct? With who? Are you currently in individual therapy with Dr. Hall? I don't know who that is. Were you ever in individual therapy with Dr. Hall? I don't know who that is. Did you, you say ever? Dr. Hall? I'm sorry? Let I was trying to see if you said Dr. Hall. Uh, but, but let me ask you another. Let me ask you another question. Honestly, I don't you, know. You, I, I know who I did therapy with. Hold on just a second, um, Miss Puckett. I'm going to put you in the waiting room for half a second and see if, it, when I bring you back, see if it clears up the audio because we, your, it's like your your voice becomes staticky and uh, staccato oh. like that, and it makes it harder to understand what you're saying. I don't know. This helps when people's 
don't have any connection, so maybe it'll help your connection. It doesn't take but just 10 seconds. Okay, and turn your camera back on for us, and then we're ready to go again. Get ready to answer his last question, I think. I'm, I'm going to repeat I the question. Said he was going to ask another question. Oh, okay. So my question was, uh, Ms. Bucket, are you currently in any individual therapy with anyone? Yes, I have a therapist up here and with who is Ellie Health. Who is that therapist? Her name is Nikki Thompson. And how long have you been seeing Ms. Thompson? I've been seeing Ms. Thompson since August of this year. Yeah. Are you aware of whether or not you provided Ms. Thompson's contact information to Mr. Yes, uh, I have. Hey, please let me finish yes, the question before you answer, okay? Because otherwise we're going to be talking over each other. And um, has Ms. Thompson, well, let me ask you this rather than that question. Has Ms., uh, are you completed your therapy with Ms. Thompson or is it ongoing? It's ongoing. I think I heard her say it was ongoing. Is that, everybody hear that? Yes. Are you currently receiving any kind of psychiatric treatment for any mental health issues, Ms. Puckett? Uh, Miss Thompson, yes. No, but I'm, what I'm asking is, are you currently seeing a psychiatrist on a regular basis? Yes, Miss Thompson, I see her once a week. Is Miss Thompson a psychiatrist or a psychologist, or what is Miss Thompson specifically? What is her title? I'm not. I'm not sure. I want to say a psychiatrist. I'm not sure. Are you currently on any medications for any mental health issues? No, no, sir. And you were previously diagnosed when you were younger with bipolar disorder, correct? Yes, sir. That was a yes, I'm sorry. You said yes. Okay. And you're not currently on yes, any sir. medications for, my, for bipolar? Repeat your question. It got chopped up somewhere in there. Sure. You're not currently on any medications for bipolar disorder? I think she froze. Go ahead. Now go ahead, Mr. Skoranek. So my last question to you, Ms. Puckett, before it was, is that you said you were, had previously been diagnosed with bipolar. And my question to you was, is you are not currently on any medications to address your previous bipolar disorder or diagnosis, correct? That's correct. Okay. You know, also as part of your case plan, you were required to submit to random drug and alcohol screens um, as requested by the department and its providers. You're aware of that, correct? Yes. And you were supposed to have 12 consecutive months of negative drug screens as part of your case plan. You're aware of that as well, right? Yes. Okay. And you'll agree with me that during the time that Chase has been in the custody of the Department and Family and Children's Services, you have never had 12 consecutive months of negative drug screens, correct? That's right. And you uh, moved out of the state of Georgia to go to Indiana sometime around May of 2020. Is that correct? May of 2020, yes. Ms. Pocket, September of what year? I didn't, I didn't hear the question. I don't know what you're asking okay. about September. So my question to you was is that you had moved from Georgia to Indiana in May of 2020. You said no in September. I'm asking you September said, 2020. I heard, say, I heard her say yes in May, 20, May 2020. Yes, that's, that's what I say. yes, May 2020. Now, um, with regards to your visitation with Chase, currently the only visitation that you're having with Chase is virtual visits. It's over the internet, uh, either video or by phone, correct? Yes. 
And since, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but the last time that you saw Chase face to face was in July of this year when Ms. Kirkland stopped by to see you in your apartment with Chase in July of this year. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And then prior to that, your last face-to-face -face visit with Chase was in February of this year when you saw Chase at Trinity's birthday party, correct? Yes. All right. And then prior to that, the, the last time that you saw Chase on a face-to-face -face basis was in December of 2022, which was last December, when you came for the bonding assessment here in Georgia, correct? Yes, yes, I think so. Yeah. All right. So those are the only three face-to-face -face visits that you've had with Chase in approximately the last 12 months, correct? Yes. I'm sorry? Yes. So um, now with regards to Chase's um, virtual visits and phone visits, how often are the virtual visits that you have with Chase currently? My how virtual often? visits were an hour. So for how long are those? Are You said for one hour? Yes. Okay. And how often? It was every, those was every Wednesday for sessions, family sessions. Say that again. I'm sorry. Those were every Wednesday for family sessions. And uh, every Wednesday? Yes. Okay. And isn't it true that until recently that you had missed some of your uh, Wednesday visits that uh, you were supposed to be having with Chase? No. Okay. So you're saying, so let me make sure I understand correctly. Are you saying that every Wednesday in the last 12 months, you've had your virtual visits with Chase? Not in the last 12 months, they fluctuated, but it was with Miss Hughes. So yes, the days change, but. I still not following. What was your explanation as to why they fluctuated in the last 12 months? It was family sessions with Miss Hughes, my family counselor. So they fluctuated based off of her schedule, my schedule, and Miss Kirkland's schedule. So you do admit that there were during the 12 months times that you did not visit Chase because of conflicts that you have. Objection, Your Honor, that's a mischaracterization of the testimony provided. She's on cross, I'll allow it. So you just stated, Ms. Puckett, that the reason that the visits fluctuated was because of Ms. Kirkland's schedule, Ms. Hughes' schedule, and your schedule, correct? Correct. Okay, so some of the uh, responsibility for missed visits would have been because of your not keeping up or showing up for the visits with Chase, correct? No. The visits that you have currently, are they still only during the, uh, the family counseling or do you have visits with Chase that uh, take place with, uh, uh, with Chase at, at Ms. Kirkland's home? So when I say business with sessions, I talked to Chase two, three times out the week. It just went back to two because he went back to school. But I was doing bedtime stories with Chase via Zoom. And I'm also doing Uno with Chase via Zoom. And I also do Zoom with Chase when he tells me about his Cub Scouts and his swim lessons and how he's doing in school. Um, you said you're doing family counseling with Ms. Hughes. Is that uh, that family counseling still ongoing? No, my last session was completed a week before Thanksgiving. She said she was going to mock up the completion certificates. So, You said that um, you were talking to Chase during your visits about how he's doing in school and things of that nature. What, what school does Chase go to? I don't currently know the name of the school that Chase goes to. What grade is Chase in? He's in the second. Second grade? Yes. Uh, do you know what his teacher's name is? No, I do not. I'm sorry? No. Okay. Does Chase have a best friend? No. 
that Chase does not have a, have a close friend or a best friend, to your knowledge? Not outside the family, no. What about, um, so Chase is going to be going into the third grade next fall. Is Chase working on anything academically to get prepared to go into the third grade, to your knowledge? Nope. And Chase has been living with Ms. Kirkland since 2018, correct? Yes. And at the time that Chase came into care, he had been living with his siblings with Mr. Hales, correct? Yes. How long had Chase and his uh, siblings been living with Mr. Hales um, prior to uh, September of 2018? I want to say... Between two to three months, give or take. So Chase has not lived with you since at least June of 2018, correct? Yes. Which is coming up on five and a half years next month, correct? Yes. And how old is Chase now? Chase is seven and he'll be eight in December. So he was about two and a half when he started living with Miss Kirkland. Is that right? Yes. Yes. It'd be fair to say that Miss Kirkland is pretty much the only family that Chase has known for his, for his no. life? No. No. He's lived with her for five and a half, almost uh, five years at this point, Miss uh, Pocket. Yeah, that's that's the way you say Objection. That's my question. I thought he asked her, has, she, has the child lived with her for five plus years is what I thought she had, he asked her. He's so he asked if whether or not that's the only family she or Chase had known. She said no. She said no. To he that. Know, and, he said, and then he stated, "Well, she's lived with her. He's lived with her for five and a half years." That's a statement. That wasn't a question. I thought it was posed as a question. I'm sorry. You want to rephrase it like a question, then, Mr. Scavonic, or move on? No, Your Honor, I'll move on. Um, you said that you were. Let's go back to your employment. You said that you were working at Amazon and that you've worked there for six since September or October. Excuse me. That's since you've been there since May. How much money are you bringing home on uh, per pay period? Between twenty five hundred, give or take, every month because I only get paid once a month. You'll have to say that again. You broke up. Between twenty four and twenty five hundred dollars a month, give or take, because I only get paid monthly. All right. And how often are you paid? Monthly. Do you have insurance? Health insurance? Uh, Medicaid, yes. Medicaid? Yes. Do you receive any other form of public assistance? Food stamps, things of that nature? No, not now. Were you previously receiving food stamps? Yes. Prior to May of 2023, when you supposedly started working at Amazon, when was the last time that you were employed anywhere other than Amazon? I worked at Save a Lot in October of 22. 2022. And I'm sorry, that was where? Save a lot. And how long were you employed there? Um, I want to say between two to three months. Okay. Where'd you work before that? I, before that, I worked, um, I was in Georgia. I worked at Taco Bell and KFC. Taco Bell? Is that what you said? Yes. And that and was North Okay, and that was when you were in Georgia? Yes. Okay, so that would have been back in 2020. 2000 and so between 2018 and 2019, so I had Julian, so yes. Okay. 
So let me make sure I got this right. Since September of 2018, when, this, when Chase and his siblings came into the custody of the Department of Family and Children's Services, you were not working, you were working at Taco Bell for some period of time, correct? Yes. Then you left the state of Georgia in May of 2020, correct? No. In 2018, when this case began, I worked at KFC. And then I worked at Taco Bell and I was working both of them at the same time until uh, December of 2019. Okay. So from December of 2019, you did not then work again until you worked in October of 2022 when you had that job for two to three months, correct? Yes. Okay. And then from October of 2022, that you did not obtain employment again until May of this year with Amazon, correct? That is correct. So during the time that Chase has been in the Department and Family and Children's Services temporary custody, you've never had 12 consecutive months where you've had employment? No. Your Honor, I don't think I have any other questions for Ms. Puckett at this time. All right, call your next witness. Your Honor, that will be Ms. Kirkland, who I believe you have in the waiting room. Yes, sir. This thing is really slow this morning as far as people coming from the waiting room into the... All right, Mr. Skavronik is going to ask you some questions, and then the other lawyers may have some questions, okay? Okay. okay. Just be sure to speak up and wait till they finish asking before you start talking. And talk. don't just nod your head, answer out loud, because we're tape recording everything that's said, okay? Okay, okay. Go ahead, Mr. Skavronik. Your Honor, now seeing Ms. Kirkland there, that just reminds me of something. Um, Chase is not on this Zoom hearing, so I just wanted to put that on the record. I don't know if the court made note of that. What Ms. Miller, I, you I apologize. I, he's, he's he's to be available, but he's I'm, here. I'm, that he's just in another room is what what I instructed Ms. Kirk to do. I just wanted to make sure that for purposes of, of uh, my notes that I had that, so he is available. And that was done with your instructions as his attorney guardian ad litem, Ms. Miller. Yes, sir. All yes, right. sir. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and I think I, I might have missed because I was. Uh, trying to get something else together so chase is there but he is in another room did we confirm he's in a room yes. where he cannot hear what's going on he can't hear what we're doing Ms. carlton correct no i'm in my bedroom and they're in another room okay great okay. all right all right so Ms. kirkland you've already stated your name um would you tell the court please how you are related to Ms. felicia pocket i am her biological maternal aunt okay. and um uh, would you uh were you also and correct me if i'm wrong did you adopt miss uh miss puckett at, at some point in time no at the age of seven her age of seven the courts gave me permanent guardianship of her and her brother okay so you in for all intents and purposes did you raise miss puckett then yes uh, tell the court a little bit about your current family makeup, please. Um, I have, it's myself, my husband, my husband's adopted son, um, our adopted daughter, who is four, and Chase. Okay, so you have three children in the home, including yes. Chase? Yes. And are oh. you employed? I'm not. If I may, did you say adopted daughter or your daughter? She said adopted daughter. I adopted daughter. Yes. I just just confirming. Thank you. Sorry. Um go go ahead. Um I think I asked my last question was that um, where you if you were employed. Are you employed, Ms. Kirkland? I'm not. I'm is your not. husband is your husband employed? Yes, he is. Okay, what does he do? Um he's he works maintenance. Okay. And how long has Chase been living with you? Um five five years and Three months, two months. Would he have been with you since September of 2018? Yes. All right. 
I'm going to ask you about Ms. Puckett's visitation um, with regards to visits that the mother has had with Chase in the last 12 months that were face to face, where she actually saw him physically face to face. How many of those has she had in the last 12 months? Um, I think two. Okay. And do you recall when those were? December and February. And was the December one um, as a result of Ms. Puckett having come to Georgia to undergo a bonding assessment? Yes. And did you take Ms. Puckett uh, or pick Ms. Puckett up and return her to the Greyhound bus station during that visit? Yes. How much time total face-to-face -face did Ms. Uh, Puckett have with Chase during that December 2022 visit? Um, I mean, the assessment total, I'd say three hours. Okay. And then you said there was another one in February of this year. Where did that take place? At my house. It's Trinity's birthday. And um, how long did that face-to-face -face visit? Um, about maybe four hours. Okay. Was there also a time that Ms. Puckett um, had uh, seen Chase when you went to Ohio in this year? Yes, I went to Ohio to visit my family in um, Ohio. My mother lives there. And then I uh, made an attempt to drive to Indiana where Felicia lives to uh, allow her to, you know, visit see Chase and allow me to see her and my son and my other grandchildren. Chase, I like him as Chase. You said, you said made him. Chase, a piece of Can I just get her out of the room? My daughter came here. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's okay, baby. Chase, I be him. Okay, you and Chase are playing something? Okay, play the game. And mommy will be right back, okay? I like him. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, we've all, I, I, I've been there. I'm sure many of us have been there. So, um, okay. So you said you made an attempt to see Ms. Her, uh, Ms. Puckett yeah. in Indiana. Did you actually see her in Indiana? Yeah, yeah. I went and seen her and my grandchildren. I'm sorry. I, I just was meaning by saying attempt. I took it upon myself to drive there. Now, did you hear the address that Ms. Puckett stated that she was living at when Ms. Uh, Judge Bartles was asking her about that when we were getting ready to start this hearing? No, I didn't. Okay. Uh, do you recall the address that you went to to see Ms. Puckett in Indiana? Um, I can pull up the address um, that she sent me. If I can pause for a moment, Your Honor. I know that we're live streaming this and, and I missed mentioning it previously. But is there a way to stop the live stream when we're disseminating sensitive information like her address, phone number, and stuff like that? Well, I mean, this is an open hearing. I don't know why um, nobody's ever asked me that before. So my inclination is no, <laughs> because it's a public and it's when we're in court, you know, it's kind of limited. But then when it's YouTube, it's out in it, it vast, it, vastly larger, um, you know, eyes. And so just for the safety of all involved, not to say that to take the whole thing off of live, it's just when sensitive information, like I know if it were a situation where medical information is being presented a lot of times um, in some of the other courtrooms I've been, they'll clear the courtroom, but for necessary individuals when they're discussing medical issues. I've, well, I've never had anybody ask me to do that in an open hearing or on Zoom, because again, it's an open hearing and their medical, the medical issues have been put into issue. So um there are some there are a few things that are sensitive that if people file motions in advance can be closed like uh, sex offenses and stuff like that but um i'm gonna leave it like it is i'm not gonna i mean we'll be here all day trying to decide what we need to turn off and turn back on the youtube and i understand i'd be very surprised if very many people are watching if they do they really <laughs> don't have anything to do uh but whatever oh you'd be surprised how many how many of these um uh web or uh, channels youtube channels that have the court cases and you'll have attorneys dissect them and have their commentary so oh well, but, goodness no, they, must really, they must not have enough business of their own but um thank you but i will overrule that request thank you Go ahead. so um let me let me rephrase my question to Ms. Kirkland. But so was that uh, address that you saw Ms. Puckett and Chase at? Was that at an Eastridge Drive apartment in Indianapolis? Yes. Okay, so that's that's as specific as I'll get on that to maybe uh, alleviate Ms. Polyard's concerns. Um, and did you have an opportunity to go into the apartment with Chase to visit with Ms. Puckett? 
yeah, we went in and stayed about mm, 30 minutes and then we walked to my son's apartment. Okay. So about 30 minutes, you said? Yes. Okay. I'm going to come back and ask you some questions about that visit in a minute. Um, with regards to virtual visits that Ms. Puckett has had with Chase, where do those take place currently? Um, mainly they have been uh, via um, the counselor. Um, and she has done a few like on her own, like sending me a Zoom link. Okay. And those uh, ones with the counselor, when did those take place? Um, they usually occur once a week. Is that on Wednesdays? Yeah, they, they have been bounced around over this period of time. They started out Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And how long do those visits uh, during the counseling, to your knowledge, take place? Well, approximately about 30, 40 minutes. Do those visits take place, to your knowledge, every Wednesday? Yes. Okay. So is Ms. Puckett actually visiting with Chase every single Wednesday? I mean, sometimes there are breaks in between. If uh, somebody's not available for a visit, then she doesn't do a visit on Zoom that day. Yeah. There have been a few instances where the counselor's been out of town for a funeral and holidays or what have you. They don't have sessions. And do you observe any of these visits between Chase and Ms. Uh, Puckett? No, I'm not allowed to be in the room. Okay. What about when Ms. Puckett contacts or visits with Chase outside of family counseling? Yes. All right. Are those just by virtual visits? Are they by phone? Is it a combination? How does that work? I mean, there's been a few, like maybe five virtual and the other a majority phone. Okay. And how many times would you say in the last 12 months, has Ms. Puckett contacted Chase outside of the family therapy sessions? Mm, on her own, not me calling. Um, maybe 15, 20, 20 at the most, max. 15 times on her own? Yeah. And when those take place, do you supervise those where the Ms. Puckett calls outside of therapy? Um. Most of the time, um, sometimes if I'm running to the restroom, I'm not in the room or whatever. If she's reading a bedtime story, I allow her to read a bedtime story while I'm going to take care of the other kid. Yeah. And have you uh, had an opportunity, like, from what you've observed about those visits where Ms. Puckett either calls or has uh, video conferences with Chase outside of the family therapy, what's Chase's reaction to those? Um, he appears sleepy or just um, not focused. And a lot of times I try to, you know, talk to him to try to get him to focus. Does he appear to be engaged with, his, you know, with Ms. Bucket, like talking to her or talking about his, you know, whatever going on in his life with her? Not, not all that much. I guess it varies from day to day. You said that sometimes Ms. Bucket will read bedtime stories to Chase? Yes, yeah, she used to. Okay. And how does he like that? He didn't like the bedtime stories. He said uh, they were for babies. And did uh, did you ever uh, discuss that with Ms. Puckett about maybe reading him something more, I, don't, I guess, age appropriate? I don't know. I mean, I tried not to interfere with that. <laughs> okay. All right. I, told, I did tell Chase if he didn't like it, you know, for him to talk to mom, you know, about it. Okay. Um. You said that let's go up that with the visit to Indiana in July that you had a chance to see the um, home of Ms. Puckett and her children at that time, correct? Yes. Okay. What, if anything, did you observe in the home that caused you concerns, if anything? Um. Hmm. Well, I guess entering into the building <laughs> it seemed kind of sketchy. Yeah. Okay. What about the actual inside of the home? Um, I mean, it looks like she tried to paint and change it around, but I mean, it was to me just kind of small, but you know, I understand it's what she can afford. What about the conditions of the home? Was it clean? It was tidy, straightened up. So, you know, I have, you know, if I go based on my, how I do things, it'd be different, you know, how I clean. In what way? Yeah, I'm a I'm a neat freak. I have uh, OCD, so I'm I'm like clean, 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 <laughs> Mister Mister Turner. So you can talk about that. 
after the visit was done, did Chase express to you anything about what he thought about the apartment in Ms. Puckett? He said it was dirty to him. I'm sorry? He said it was dirty. Um, what about Chase? Have you had any discussions or conversations with Chase about his interests in going back to live with Miss Puckett? I mean, I told him they may come a time that he has to. Has he ever expressed to you wanting to go or go back and live with Miss Puckett? No, he said he'd run away or dig a tunnel and come back home. Where has Chase told you, if any, that he would prefer to live? Here with us. Um, has Chase, during the time that he's lived with you, had any medical appointments for any kind of medical issues? Um, he hasn't had any medical issues, no. I mean, in the beginning, they said he had asthma, but he soon, I guess, outgrew that, and we didn't have the need for the albuterol, the machine, the nebulizers. So he's done really well, like, not needing those anymore. After, like, like eight months, he didn't need those medications anymore. He was good. But other than for the asthma, and I'm assuming, like, regular wellness checkups or oh, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I take him I take him yearly to his um annual medical and dental visits. He has two well he has had more than two dental visits, but I take him annually to his medical and dental. He's had a lot of dental work repairs on his teeth. So this year alone he's been seen like six times. Okay. Um and has Ms. Puckett been involved in any of those medical appointments? Has she gone with you to any of those? No. Does Ms. Puckett ever inquire to you about, you know, how is Chase doing? Does he have any medical issues? No. What does Chase call Ms. Puckett? Um, because I pushed him to say, at first he used to call her Felicia, but I tell him that's disrespectful. So what does he call her? I'm sorry. What does he call her now? Um, sometimes, well, when he's not on the Zoom, he calls her Felicia here, and I still have to tell him that's disrespectful. So when he minds you, what does he call her? Oh, mom. Okay. What does he call you? Mom. Okay. What does he call your husband? Paul or Pop. Have you ever heard Chase say, I love you to his mother? No. Since Chase has been living with you since September of 2018, have you received any regular financial support from Ms. Puckett for Chase? No. no. Has Ms. Puckett ever asked you for money? Yes. What has she asked you for money for? Um, when she's running low on food and things like that. Or um, I've helped her when she was going to uh, South Carolina buying bus tickets. I'd help her sometimes when she come here, help uh, buy a bus ticket for her to get back home. You know, helping her out. Has she ever asked you for money to come and see Chase? No. Has she ever asked you for money for food for herself and her children in Indiana? Yes. How many times has she done that? A lot. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't hear you. A lot. A lot. When was the last time that she asked you it's for money? A lot. A oh, a lot. About 30 times. When was the last time she asked you for money for food? Um, November 14th. Of this year? Yes. But I only sent $20. Do you, um, out, outside of Chase uh, having contact with Ms. Puckett and outside of Chase having contact with Ms. Puckett through the family counseling, does Ms. Puckett contact you directly to talk to you about what's going on with Chase? You know, call you and say, hey, just, you know, what's going on kind of deal? Um, I mean, she'll call me, not necessarily based on one subject, no. Okay. So what does she call you about? I mean, sometimes she's calling to, um, to see how I'm doing, or she'll say, um, "Do am I having a visit with Trinity and Tristan? You know, whatever, so she can be able to talk to them. Uh, sometimes she tells me about what's going on with my other grandkids. Yeah. Um. Now, when these children came into care, they had been living, including Chase, had been living with Mr. Pocket, uh, excuse me, Mr. Saul Hales for some period of time prior to DFAX taking custody. Do you recall that? Yes. Okay. 
do you know how long Chase and his uh, siblings had been living with Mr. Hales before they came into the defects custody? My recollection is just maybe three to four months. Do you do you have any knowledge as to why the children, including uh, Chase, were living with Mr. Hales rather than with Miss Puckett? Because uh, Felicia was getting a job and needing some help with the kids while she tried to work so she can uh, find her somewhere to live, the permanent, more permanent place. Okay. Since 2018, you said you had conversations with Ms. Puckett, um, you know, outside of involving Chase. What, if anything, has Ms. Puckett told you about where she's been working, if she's been working at all? Um, she said Amazon. Okay. Did she ever tell you about working at, uh, the, at Taco Bell or KFC? Well, I recall she was working at one point at a, a KFC because I had went to the place of employment one time just to, you know, see. Yeah. How many, um, so this may not be able to answer this, but I'm going to ask it anyway. From 2018 till now, obviously a little over five years that we're talking about, how many different jobs has Ms. Puckett had during that time to your knowledge? Um, to my knowledge, maybe three. To your knowledge, has Ms. Puckett ever kept the job for longer than six months during that time? Not that I call it, recall. Has Ms. Puckett, during your conversations with her over the last five years, ever told you about being unemployed? I mean, yeah, I, I knew that. Yeah. How many times in the last five years has Ms. Puckett been unemployed, to your knowledge? I'm going to say majority of the time. <laughs> majority of the five years. I asked you before about whether or not the uh, Ms. Puckett had provided you with any financial support for Chase. And you said no. What about um, for Chase's birthday or for Christmas? Did she send him birthday or Christmas gifts? Um, I think like she sent, uh, well, sometimes she'll tell me if I'll buy Christmas gifts and she'll give me the money for it. Okay. Did she do that? So we're talking... She's had at least four Christmases with you. Is every Christmas, has she given you money for Chase? No. What about for his birthday? I think she uh, sent him $10 or $20. Okay, was that for his last birthday? No, the birthday before. What about this last birthday? Did she give him any uh, card or gift or anything? No. Is Chase involved in any kind of extracurricular activities? Yes. What's he involved with? Um, I have him in Cub Scouts. He has swimming practice, and he has tried out for soccer. Okay. Um, has Ms. Puckett provided you with any kind of um, money or anything like that for Chase to be in Cub Scouts? No. So I, you know, this is back 40-something years ago now. So, you know, my, my recollection was when I was in Cub Scouts, my parents had to pay, you know, like for the uniform, for camping equipment, initiation. Do you have those same kind of expenses? Yeah, I had to pay for him initially to join Cub Scouts, and they have uh, yearly fees that had to be paid. I had I, to buy him uniforms, and since we've had to go and buy um, tents and all kind of camping equipment, you know, because he is going to be doing camping. We also do other activities that if it requires funds to do those activities, we pay for them. Okay. And so for the, for any of that or for, you know, the swimming lessons or for, you know, soccer uniforms or cleats or anything like that, any support or money from Ms. Bucket for Chase to participate in any of those activities? No. Yeah. Does Chase have a best friend? Yes. What's his best friend's name? Taylor and Omari. Okay. Where do they live? Um, Omari lives down the street, and um, Taylor is at school. He's had a birthday party at Taylor's house before. Okay. So he has two best friends. Yes. Um, what about, uh, what's the name of, uh, Chase's school? Kilpatrick. And he's in the second grade? Yes. What's the name of his second grade teacher? Miss Dominic. Is Chase having any kind of academic issues in school right now? No, he's doing, um, fairly well. Okay. Did you have some previous this year, some, uh, some, uh, areas that uh, Chase needed to improve on in school? Math, um, and he has a tutor for that as well. He goes to tutoring. 
about was there ever a time that you needed to work with Chase on words and uh, then have like flashcards made for his his word uh, comprehension yes. for a sight word his sight words yes. And what were you doing to work with Chase on those sight words? I work with him at using like ten cards at a time until that he knows the whole hundred and twenty that he needs to know for this year. So I made the sight word cards and I just flash them in front of him and we work on them. Once he doesn't know, I'll tell him and then we'll come back to it. We'll repeat it a couple times together. And then I'll lay it to the side and we'll come back to it. And we continue to work on them until he's able to grasp every last one of them. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed there'd be an improvement in his comprehension of those sight words that you're working on with him? He is doing very well. Very, very does, well. Any, does anybody else assisting uh, Chase other than yourself or his tutors? With, yes. Um, my husband um, sometimes will work with him as well as um, our, uh, well, my stepson, 15-year-old Landon. He also assists too. What about Miss Puckett? Has she been involved in any of that to try to, you know, help Chase with his homework or with his math or with his sight words? No. Has Chase bonded with you and your husband and the other children you have in your home? Yes. What makes you say that? What have you observed about Chase since he's been living with you that makes you think he's bonded with you and your family? I mean, he started calling me mom and he also talks about the, uh, our four-year-old is his baby sister and he's very protective over her. And if Chase were to be made available for adoption, uh, if the scores were to terminate Ms. Puckett's parental rights to Chase and then, you know, the department would uh, make the child available for adoption, are you and your husband interested in adopting Chase? Most certainly. Are you financially in a financial position to be able to care for Chase? Yes. Are you, you and your husband, would you be able to meet all of Chase's uh, uh, needs should he be made available for adoption? Of course. Are you aware of any substantial property that Chase stands to inherit from Ms. Puckett? In other words, you know, Ms. Puckett has, you know, a, a, a good bit, you know, some land or housing or, or stocks or, you yeah. know, retirement funds or anything like that, that he might stand to inherit from Ms. Puckett? No. After Chase has these visits with uh, Ms. Puckett, does, is there anything notable about his behaviors or the way he acts after the visits? He just kind of gets back into things. Now, there's been a couple times when he's had counseling sessions that he's cried after, but I don't know what happened. Do you know when the last time that happened was? Um, it was after a counseling session with his counselor. But I'm saying when? Like um, about three weeks ago. Three weeks does, ago. Uh, does Chase ever ask you, you know, come up and say, you know, uh, grandma, can I talk to call mom today? Or, you know, um, you know, can we have a zoom call with mom today or anything like that? No, I make him try to call mom. Does Chase ever ask you about his mom? No. Another questions from a sparkling yarn. All right. Ms. Polio, do you have any questions? Yes, Your Honor. One moment. Your Honor, um, before Ms. Polliard starts, can I have like five minutes to use the bathroom real quick? Thank God, I was waiting until two o'clock for that. Me no, too. <laughs> All right. Hurry Everybody up. holds it. Hurry back. There's always one in the group. Ms. Puckett. We're starting back. I need I need to be able to see you during the hearing. Mr. Turnip Seed, I need to be able to see you during the hearing. All right, uh, Ms. Pollard, you had some questions for Ms. Kirkland. You may go ahead. So you stated that with respect to the December visit, this is the December 2022 visit. That was three hours. Um, how did that visit go? I mean, I don't really know how it went. I um, went out to my car. Oh, okay. When Chase came back, did he seem distressed or at all? At all? Um, I mean, no, we had McDonald's in the car, so they just went straight to eating. <laughs> okay. And then how about the February visit? After, after that visit, did Chase seem distressed at all? He was mad because he said mommy kept pulling on him. This is at the party? But it wasn't a party. It was just a visit. She came to visit before. Okay. Now, when, pulling on him, would that be like hugging him? 
No, he said she was grabbing his arm, pulling on him. And then what about the July 2023 visit? How did that go? Um, he wasn't really too and in, who too involved, but you know, he was kind of looking and seeing what the kids were playing on video games, kind of focused on video games. Is he focused on video games a lot? No, he he likes more TV. He doesn't care too much about video games, but he was watching them on video. He has a game. Okay. And so in some of the, uh, I know you previously testified, sometimes he he made mention that, you know, the story time is for babies and, and whatnot, and he may be distracted. Is is he being distracted by TV or something electronic? No, I turn off the TV. Okay. So what, ha, describe what his distraction would be. He'd roll his eyes and want to play with his stuffed animal. Okay. So it's more so he just wants to play. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Now, previously you stated that, well, previously you were asked about the every Wednesday visit and that sometimes it, it gets moved around um, because of different schedules. You recall that? Yes. Okay. Now, when they're moved around, have they been made up in that same week? Mm, not, no. Okay. But have, have do you recall them being made up if they have to be rescheduled? Not during that same week. If there's not a visit, what I normally do is have Chase call her. Okay. Um, and then you've testified that some of these missed visits would be on the part of the therapist as well. Yes. Okay. So with the Zoom visits and the phone calls, um, have you and I know you, you say that you encourage Chase to call if that visit was if uh, the therapy visit was missed. But do you encourage Chase to call um, at any other time? All the time. I had him. I, I encourage him to call all this week. The majority of the days that he was out of school, he called Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. To wish to tell. I told him to um, tell them his mom happy uh, Thanksgiving. Okay, so when you when you encourage him, he does take that initiative to um, sometimes. That, well, sometimes I have, he'll start having his crying episodes and he doesn't want to talk. And I have to uh, basically tell him, okay, well, if you'll talk, then I'll give you extra TV time, extra time, you know, just talk and do what you're supposed to do. Talk to mom. Okay, and then do you refer to Miss Puckett as mom? Yes, I say mommy. I say mommy. Okay. Um, and so, and again, back to when you stated that Chase felt that the bedtime stories were too baby. Um, isn't it true that mom would also play Uno with him online? Yeah, she just started playing Uno. Yes. Okay. So she, she would try to find other ways to have him engaged if he, if it, the previous um, yeah. activity isn't something that he's interested in. Yeah. That's what I kind of suggested because he likes playing Uno. Okay. Um, now you testify that when Chase was there at, at this, uh, July visit that you felt that the home was tidy, but not to your standards. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I can't hold everybody to my standards. Understandable. Um, and then you said Chase made mention that it was not clean. Yes. He said it was dirty oh. to him. Okay. But Would that be w with him being used to your household? Mm -hmm. I'm sure. Okay. But you yourself thought it was at least tidy. Yeah. Okay. You said that Chase calls you mom and your husband pa or pop. Yeah. Okay. How long has been how long has Chase been calling you mom? For about the last three or four years. Have you ever corrected Chase and let him know that your grandma and Miss Also whole times I think I've told Trinity and Trisha did the same thing. And I told them I am Mimi. But after a certain point of, I guess, my kids calling me mom, it just became I, so many times of correcting them. And you see the look on their face. I'm not going to continue to make them feel bad or feel like they're doing something or I'm hurting their feelings. Okay. But do you at least make it clear, even if they're calling you mom, that you are grandma yes. and that Miss Puckett is mom? Yes, I have and done have it. Of course, that understanding that Miss Puckett is mom. Yes. I tried. How 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 often do you try to reinforce that? 
Mm, about 80% of the time. When's the last time have you brought it up? Um, I always tell him when he says Felicia, I'll say, uh, that's mom. Stop, stop being disrespectful. I still to try to get him to be respectful and understand. I'm and not going to let him forget regardless who his mother is. Okay. And what is his response after you tell him like, well, no, that's mom. He gets mad. And what do you do to have that conversation with him on? Um, I, just, I just try uh, to tell him, I understand, but this is mom. I love you and it's not going to change the way I feel about you. Mm -hmm. I said, you already know who I am. You know I mean me. Oh, but they still do it. I can't just punish them or make them. Oh, no, I wouldn't ask you to punish them. Not at all. Um, now you stated that there are times that Miss Puckett would call and just have conversations with you and yes. see how things are going on. Mm -hmm. Now, isn't it true um, that she would also ask you about what's going on with Chase, with school, and extracurricular activities or anything like that? I told her about the extracurricular activities and things that I put him in, and I do try to ask her how she feels about certain things. Like I ask her, "How do you feel about me putting him in soccer?" Mm -hmm. and she just said at that time she didn't feel it was right right now until we figure out how things are going to go but I do let her know what I have him in and what he's actively involved in okay but she herself has also asked about what it is that he's in and how school is going on mm, I don't I can't I don't recall okay um, do you recall do you recall a situation in which the department instructed you not to provide Miss Puckett with school information for Chase? No. Now you stated that Miss Puckett has not provided financial support and she would give or to give maybe some money for the birthday or ask, you know, whatever, if you're going to give him something, she can send you funds for that. Isn't, isn't that correct? Yes. Okay. Isn't it true that she's also asked you on occasion, uh, on a number of occasions, if Chase needed anything that she can provide to you? to help out and you refused no never have i refused has she you're saying you never refused no i've never refused money or assistance okay, okay. even if when she was offering to provide clothing shoes um toys anything like that none of those okay and then for the extracurricular activities that he's in um You've not asked Miss Puckett if she wants to contribute to those activities, have you? No, but I've informed her that I paid for them. I'm not going to ask her to pay for something if she asked me to give her money. Okay. Um, now, you said Chase's best friend is Taylor and Omari? Yes. How long have they been his friends? Taylor has been his friend since first grade, and Omari has been his friend for the last four years. He just lives two doors down from us. Okay. Um, when talking about Chase to Miss Puckett, have you informed her about his friends? No. So when you talk to her about Chase, what do you talk about? I mean, she talks to me about whatever we're talking about, whatever she calls me to talk about or whatever I call to tell her about. And and I'm asking you, what is it that you talk about when it pertains to Chase? So what do what information do you provide to her? I mean, I tell her about Cub Scouts, like um, I send her pictures of him and his Cub Scouts. I send him pictures of the little um, girl that likes him in Cub Scouts. I, I keep her updated on photos. But you don't talk to her about his friends? No, we don't talk about friends. There's never a question about who he's playing with or anything. If I say he's outside playing, there's never a question. So I just don't bring it up. It's not. So is it you expect her to assume that he's outside playing with friends? And no, I just tell, I tell her he's outside playing. If she says, what's Chase doing? I'll say he's outside playing. Now, with respect to... When was Chase's last doctor's appointment? Um, in March. Okay. Um, isn't it true that Miss Puckett has brought up concerns that um people have that chase may be on the spectrum um she didn't actually the counselor did and i did take him to a visit and i'm trying to recall that exact date um i took him to the pediatrician 
because it, I was trying to find um, the Marcus Institute. I tried to call them about getting an observation done, but they told me there's a five-year waiting list. So I took him to his pediatrician. His pediatrician observed him. I provided documentation for that, um, what the um, pediatrician said to Mr. Turnipseed. Did you provide that information to Ms. Puckett? No, I gave it to Mr. Turnipseed, but I did tell Ms. Puckett that I took him to the visit. And when did you tell her that? Um, we had a discussion about it in July. And I was following back up with another is called Discovery, the Discovery Center. And we're still on the waiting list for them as well for a second opinion. Okay. Now you testified that at one point after a session, Chase, after a session, a counseling session that Chase was crying. Yes. Okay. Isn't it true that was an individual session? That Chase yes. had with the counselor? Yes. Yes. Oh. Um, so you don't know why it is that he was crying or if it had anything to do with Miss Puckett. He came in and he was crying because he said Miss Hughes told him that I'm no, not his mom. That, and let's not go into okay. that. That's a lot of okay. all the hearsays, but okay. um, mm -hmm. yeah, when it comes to that, but at minimum, Miss Miss Puckett was not. Your Honor, I'm going to object to that because Miss Pollard asked the question, "Do you have any reason to know why he was crying?" And Miss Kirkland was responding to that, and I think she should be allowed to give a full and complete answer to that. Well, if the if the answer is, "Well, this person told me this, and this is um, this is why I felt X, Y, and Z," that would be an, a hearsay issue with respect to Miss Hughes. Now, if it's a matter of, well you know, Chase came in and he felt upset because of X, Y, Z without stating what someone else may have said, then that would be fine. I thought she was going to get ready to tell us what Chase told her, which wouldn't be. It, it sounds like what Chase told her from what someone else had said. Oh, okay. And so if we, if she could limit or, or not have what Ms. Hughes had said and just essentially not Ms. Hughes told Chase this and Chase said this, it may be a matter, if it's a matter of, well, Chase was upset um, because he felt that he may have to go home or Chase was upset that um, he was, you know, he may have to do this visit. That's fine. Ms. Kirkland, but, did Chase tell you why he was upset or did some yes. third party tell you why he was upset? He told me why he was upset. Okay. T go ahead and tell us why he said okay. he was upset. He told me he was upset because the counselor told him, I am not his mom and he, he needs to stop calling me mom, that he has a mom. Okay. All right. Okay. Ask another question if you have any more. Uh, I think just a couple. If parental rights were to be terminated, um, what are your plans for allowing Chase to have a relationship with his mother? Well, because she's my daughter, I will. She will still be able to see him and visit. I'm not going to block her out of his life. That's still his mother. The same opportunity I would have afforded to my sister, her biological mother, would her mother have been available? And would that be more information than, you know, if she were to ask, what's Chase doing? He's playing outside. W would you provide more information like he's playing outside with his friends? I mean, that would probably remain the same. I would just say he's playing. I mean, unless she inquired more in depth. If she inquired more in depth, then I would say he's outside playing with the kids or he's outside playing on his scooter or he's outside riding his bike or whatever. I mean, whatever he's doing, I kind of just say what he's doing. And I'll say, you know, sometimes I'll say, you want me to call him in? And she'll say, no, I can talk to him later. Okay. No further questions. All right. Ms. Miller? Uh, you might have answered this, but how much contact has mom had with uh, Trinity and Tristan since they've left your home? Um, On that, I can't answer fully, but I know she tells me sometimes she hasn't had a lot of contact at all. And that I, I will call her while they're here and let her speak to them. And how often are they coming over to your house? Every two weeks, other than the time when I was sick, they missed a, a visit. So they're getting consistent contact with Chase? Yes. That's all I have, Judge. All right. Um, any redirect, Mr. Skavronik? No, Your Honor. All right. Your Honor, can I ask one follow-up question based on Ms. Miller's question? Go ahead. Um, with respect to the other children when they visit, you stated that you're not uh, aware about... Uh, Ms. Puckett have a visitation with those or, or how that works. Um, are you aware of the difficulties that Ms. Puckett has had with the father of the other children 
when it comes to her trying to visit or speak with them? He did mention that. And that's why I make them available to speak with her while they're here. Okay. No further questions. All right. Um, Dr. Hay just popped up in my waiting room. So. How uh, much better can I time that for the court? Well, I'm sure there was some. I just, just going on. He's, he I said. Just want you he to said, remember this. He, your, your honor said you get no credit. <laughs> um, are you ready for her? I am, Your Honor. Any, any objection to Ms. Crockett remaining in the courtroom? Anybody? No objection. No objection. I feel like she's been in all of our hearings. All right. How long have you been with Atlanta Psychological? I'm going to assume it's less than a year. It's a, it's almost a year since approximately January, February okay. of 23. And uh, you said you are uh, the psychologist. Is that uh, you currently licensed in the area or as a psychologist by the state of Georgia? Yes, sir. I've been licensed in the state of Georgia since 2008. And how many years total have you practiced? And, you know, potentially you may have practiced outside of Georgia. So how many years total has it been that you've been in practicing as a psychologist? Um, let's see. So I'm, I'm, I'm about 14 and a half years um, and that has been um, only in the state of Georgia. Okay. All right. Tell the court a little bit about um, uh, how long you were worked uh, Georgia Psychological, which is where you were employed when you did the attachment and bonding assessment. Correct. <clears throat> so um, I worked as a as a contractor for Georgia Psychological Associates since approximately 2018. Um, before. I was working with Georgia Psychological Associates. Um, I have been with where I'm at right now, um, Atlanta Psychological Services. So I essentially just went back into practice. Okay. Do you have any particular area of focus in your practice? Um, primarily, it's working with children and families through um, various assessments and evaluations. And how long? Has your practice been focused in the area of children and families and assessments of those relationships? Um, that has been the majority of my 14 and a half year career. Okay. <laughs> do you do just assessments? Do you provide counseling services? Is it a combination of the things? What is it exactly that your, your practice looks like? For the past five or six years, I have only primarily um, done assessments and evaluations. Okay. And have you testified? I know the answer to this question already before, but have you testified in court previously? Yes, sir. Do you know about how many times you might have testified in court? Um, Pre-COVID, I, I say I was testifying um, anywhere from one to three times a month. Um, since then, it's been more sporadic over the last few years um, or since COVID. I'm going to say um, maybe three or four times a year since then. And have you been qualified in those uh, cases where you have testified as an expert witness? Yes, I have. And uh, generally, what is the uh, parameters of your expertise? Um, it's been... Um, it's been both primarily as a clinical psychologist, as well as um, a focus in assessments and evaluations. Uh, Your Honor, I'm going to tender uh, Dr. Hay at this point as an expert witness in the area of psychology and um, uh, assessments. If, and if Ms. Polliard or Ms. Miller have any questions, I'll leave that up to them. Any more there? No, sir. No, Your Honor. All right. And you're licensed by the state of Georgia? Yes, sir. <clears throat> And your licensure is in what? Um, as, a, as a clinical psychologist or psychologist. All right. Go ahead. The court finds her qualified as an expert and will allow her to testify accordingly. Go ahead, Mr. Just, your Honor, just one, one question, because I think I might have missed this. How long how long have you, excuse me, how long have you been a practice uh, practicing psychologist? If my if my math is correct, it's since, two, it is absolutely since 2008. So if my math's correct, um, pushing 15 years. Okay. Well, thank you. Sir. No, no, you're fine. Go ahead. Yeah. No problem. Uh, now, did you have a opportunity when you were um, working for Georgia Psychological Associates, uh, Dr. Hay, to conduct an attachment and bonding assessment 
for Chase Puckett. and his mother, Felicia Puckett? Yes, sir. On um, December 1st of 2022. Where was that done? It was conducted at the Henry County DFAX office in McDonough, Georgia. Is that typical? Do you normally go and uh, outside of your office to conduct those kinds of assessments or was that unusual? Or, I mean, is that how you normally do it? That was how it was normally done um, with Georgia Psychological Associates. Okay. And and here, I'm sorry. Were you asked to do that attachment and bonding assessments by the Department of Family and Children's Services? Yes. And tell the court a little bit about um, how those uh, the attachment and bonding assessments go work okay. in essence. So um, essentially what happens is the child or children um, who are being assessed with the uh, caregiver, which is typically a biological parent or a foster parent. Um, in this particular case, it was Chase and his biological mother. And um, at the Henry County DFAX office, they have a really great um, like large playroom. And it um, also has um, two-way mirrors <clears throat> attached to another office. So it, it, it provides a really good... Um, space, if you will, <clears throat> for the evaluation. And as part of that evaluation, um, what's happening is observations between the individuals in that room, um, how they're engaging with, with each other, how do they speak to each other, um, and, and just trying to get an understanding of how, um, what, what their bond looks like. <clears throat> of course, it's a snapshot. Um, it, it's a snapshot, um, of that attachment and bonding. Um, also, as part of the attachment and bonding assessment, the parent, um, in this case, the parent, completes a self-report measure that looks at various parenting attitudes and beliefs. Um, she, It's a, it's a um, form that she filled out. And, um, and also, as part of that evaluation, I speak with the parent, just gathering kind of some background information. All right. So in this particular case, it, um, were your sources of information, did they include speaking with Ms. Puckett directly? Yes. Okay. She attended. Sort of get, I'm sorry. She was in person. Her. Yes, it was in person, if that's what you're asking. And, and yeah. so we spoke directly to each other in person. Right. And then you talked about um, that you normally do clinical observations where you observe the interactions between the child and the parent or whomever. And yes. then the standardized testing and, and checklist that you go through. Was all of that done in this particular bonding assessment? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. All right. Um, now, I wanted to ask you, um, and uh, in your attachment and bonding assessment, about that the mother had made a statement to you, and this is in the background information that she had provided to you, that she uh, reported to you that, she went to Indiana and that the father was the caregiver. Is that correct? Yes. Um, she did report that when she moved to Indiana, um, a father was the caregiver until his um, reported incarceration. And at that point, the children were placed with their grandmother. Would you be uh, surprised to learn that, in fact, that Ms. Puckett uh, did not move to Indiana until sometime in 2020? Um, yes, that, that's not what was reported to me. What, if anything, during your conversations and your background information, did Ms. Puckett report to you about when she has visitation with Chase and or you know, previously Chase was living with his siblings and then the siblings have now gone and they reside with their biological father. But prior to that, she was having visits with, with, the, with the children. What did she report to you about where the children tended to focus when she was visiting with Chase and his siblings? She she did report to me that during visitations, Miss Kirkland supervised those visitations and the children tended to um, um, focus on their grandmother and not on her. Um, and then she also made a similar statement that when the grandmother, Miss Kirkland, was not present, she thought that the visits went well. Did you have any concerns during your conversations with Ms. Puckett in obtaining her background information about Ms. Puckett's being forthcoming as to your inquiry as to prior substance abuse history? 
Um, I, I did sense some guardedness. Um, she appeared defensive around those questions. It was difficult for me to get a true history of her substance abuse history. Um, she did um, report that she was charged with the DUI for being under the influence of opioids um, and, and said that she had had a history of taking opioids. But at the time of this evaluation, she said she was testing negative on drug screens. I just, I'm just not sure I understood that. Um, did you say that she reported a history of having used opioids? Yes. Yes. So she reported a history of using opioids. She did report being charged with the DUI due to being under the influence of opioids. And she had said at the time of this evaluation that she was testing clean on her drug screens. Was there ever there anything about Ms. Bucket disclosing about the last time that she had used any sort of um, controlled substances? No, she was very guarded around any specific questions. She, um, I felt that she was kind of providing the minimal to, to, to be forthcoming that she did have a history of drug use, but did not want to expand on those specific details. Okay. What about as far as what Mother uh, Ms. Bucket reported to you about um, previous mental health history? She did report that she had um, a history of being psychiatrically hospitalized uh, as an adolescent. She estimated a, a approximately 12 years old, um, but she denied any adult um, psychiatric care um, or history. Um, let's see. She said she was hospitalized twice as an adolescent, diagnosed with bipolar disorder, um, and she did disclose a, an abuse history as well. Was that sexual abuse history? Yes, sir. <clears throat> um, and would you, um, if a individual has uh, been diagnosed as a adolescent, as reported by Ms. Puckett, um, with bipolar, would that be something that you would continue to expect that an individual be treated for as an adult, or does that just depend on the case? Um, well, uh, bipolar disorder is a um. Is, is, is one of the disorders that do not go away. It cannot, the way you treat it is through medication and therapy. Um, it is, it's biochemical. Sorry, that was the word I was looking for. It's a biochemical disorder, such as schizophrenia. So um, as opposed to depression, <clears throat> in which an individual may experience depression due to a significant stressor and over time, those symptoms remit. So um, of course, I don't have the information about how, she, you know, who diagnosed or how she was diagnosed. Um, but if someone is truly diagnosed at the age of 12, then they would also be exhibiting those symptoms throughout their lifetime. So there's, my understanding, you say there's no cure. It's something you can live with, but it's, there's no cure for it. It doesn't just go away. Yes, it's it, correct. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Then did you also have an opportunity to observe uh, Ms. Pocket and Chase uh, interacting with one another? I did. Yes. How, how long does that typically, you know, what kind of time frame are we talking about for your observation? It was approximately two hours. Okay. And do you give any sort of directions to the parent or caregiver about, you know, what you want to see from them during that? Or do you just sort of put them in the room and see what happens? Put them in the room and encourage them to engage the way that they would um, if I was not present. Okay. Um, some, some parents, like uh, some individuals, will request more direction. Um, but for the most part, most individuals understand that those directions and um, follow through. And Miss Puckett was one of those. Um, she, um, it, it was clear that Miss Puckett and Chase had a rapport in that, um, meaning that they appear comfortable around each other. Um, he did not appear distressed around her or scared of her or threatened in any sort of way. Um, but I'm sorry, I realized you didn't really ask me to um, talk about my observations yet. Okay. So what, if anything, was notable about your observations with regards to Ms. Bucket and Chase? So what was notable was that um, Chase was very interested in playing with his siblings. He, it was clear that he and his siblings had a positive relationship. In fact, um, 
that's where his focus was. His focus during this observation period was engaged, mostly engaging with his siblings. And then at some point, um, electronics were passed around and he was mostly engaged with that. Whenever Miss Puckett would kind of ask him question, questions, try to redirect his attention back to her, um, he ignored her um, and continued to play in the way that he wanted, which was with his siblings or his electronic device. Um, he Towards the end, um, and, and two hours can be a very long time for a six-year-old. He he was exhibiting kind of some oppositional behavior. Um, I think he was kind of um, maybe tired of the the observation period, and um, and it was observed that um, he just continued to, despite her attempts to reengage him, he was not interested. Um, also, my observations. I, I will say, Miss Puckett, she sat on the floor with the children. She sat on the sofa. Um, she did attempt to engage um, um, very much so. She um, she um, reported that she loved her children very much. She reported that she wanted reunification. And I did feel that that was evident. I did not sense or observe any type of um, her ignoring or not being interested in her children. Um, I also observed that there was no... Um, affection, verbal affection or physical affection. The children did not hug on their mother. And I apologize, I'm, this is about Chase, but Chase did not hug his mother. She did not hug him. Um, and, and I understand not all families are like that, but um, it was notable. What would you typically expect to see if you're uh, seeing a well-adjusted, you know, uh, relationship between a parent and child as far as, you know, um, you know, every family is different. I take I, I take that as a given, but are there things that you would typically expect to see as far as verbal and like physical or emotional affection during that kind of observation? So my experience with doing these type of, of assessments is absolute is typically what I observe in a healthy dynamic and of a child of, of, of Chase's age, six years old, um, would be um, sitting on the parent's lap, kind of demanding their attention, really wanting and craving that affection. Um, I miss you, hearing words such as I miss you, um, potentially I love you. Um, but definitely I you you I observe the children really um wanting that affection and attention from the parent versus being more withdrawn from the parent. And did you see any of that with regards to Chase's interactions with Ms. Bucket? None of that. You talked about Chase being irritable and more interested in the electronics um, in that. Uh, uh, did Ms. Puckett, what she observed to try to set limits on Chase's, uh, you know, what he was doing or his behaviors during that, um, during the play session that you observed? There were some minimal limits um, in which minimal meaning she did ask him to set the electronics down or encourage him to engage with her. Um, however, he did not and she did not push the issue. Is that something, again, in a well-defined and healthy relationship that, you know, you kind of, you, you do step one, if step one doesn't work, then you go to step two, if step two doesn't work, then you go to step three, it's like a nuclear option or whatever. I mean, is that something you would see that they would go and, and if, go Correct. beyond that first step? Yes, it would, it would show some healthy um, discipline strategies or, res, you know, um, respect um, of the parent um, to, you know, yet you're, um, to exert more um, demand and the child following through with that redirection. Okay. All right. Now, did you also uh, give Ms. Puckett a screening inventory as part of your um, assessment? Yes. Right. Tell that the is... about, a little bit about what that is and what that's designed to measure, if you would. Yes, sir. So that's called the Parent Child Relationship Inventory. And it looks at the caregiver's feelings and attitudes towards parenting and child rearing activities. For example, it looks at the parent's level of support from others. It looks at satisfaction with parenting, looks at the parent's involvement with the child, looks at the parent's communication with the child, limit setting looks at the parent's ability to provide autonomy to the child as well as role orientation. And there were no validity concerns yielded during this measure, which suggests that she did um, um, answer the questions in a way that did not elevate defensiveness or inconsistency scales. So it, it, it appears to be a face valid representation. And on all these subscales, 
the subskills I just listed out, they all fell within the average range. So um, what, so she is telling, so this measure is telling us that there are not any overt signs of her um, having some negative feelings or attitudes about parenting. Um, she perceives herself as an average parent in regards to her children. And this does support the behavior observations and that she did sit with them on the floor. She did sit beside them on the sofa. Um, she, you know, um, she did report she wants reunification. So this is very consistent. Um, there were no overt signs of her being, um, um, of, of not showing adequate skills, albeit um, with the exception of not pushing um, her son to get off the electronic if that's what she wanted. Um, the, the really the the concerns that were noted were Chase's attachment or his reaction to his mother. That was the primary concern. And would that, when you say attachment, um, what are you saying there? Are you saying lack of attachment or what? Yes, sir. So saying that Chase exhibited a poor attachment and bond with his mother, Miss Puckett, as evidenced by his not having communication with his mother during this observation period, focused on playing with his siblings, focused on his electronics, focused on um, or and not focused on his mother, who in theory or, or uh, not in theory, I'm sorry, who it, it sounds like he did not have a lot of time with her um, in terms of seeing her on a regular basis. Okay. And in uh, your recommendations, what did you recommend after conducting this attachment or bonding assessment? So according to the um, information, Chase had been residing with his grandparents for four years. Um, and as a six-year-old, that means, you know, all of his life, essentially. Um, so um, I listed out that there are some concerns. However, should reunification be considered? I would recommend frequent visitations because we want to build that parent-child relationship because seemingly it was not present. It was clear that Chase knew his mother, um, was calm around her, was not fearful of her. However, he was not overly engaged with her or engaged with her at all that you would expect to see. So I, I recommended frequent visitations to build that relationship. I also made a recommendation for family therapy where, um, should there be reunification that in a therapeutic context, um, they can build that relationship. You said in your recommendations and you talked about the childhood being with Ms. Kirkland four years at the time that you saw him. And now here we are, you know, as of today's hearing, this child having been with Ms. Kirkland now over five years. And you talk about the lingering effects of non-permanency in your report. Can you describe or clarify what that means for the court? Yes, sir. So what that means is when a is the lingering effects of non-permanency is when a child is in care for an extended period of time so that so that they don't really have a um, clear um, understanding that this is their family. So what happens is when a child doesn't know where they're going to be tomorrow or six months from now, it can create um, some anxiety on their sense of safety and security. And um, and this is especially if a child is aware that they may not be, in this case, with grandparents um, in the future. So if they have a healthy attachment and bond with their current caregivers, who they who he has been with his essentially his entire life, it's but doesn't know that he's going to continue to be with them tomorrow or next month. Um, those those that anxiety is very well documented with children and what effect can that potentially have on either the mental health or emotional well-being or physical health even of a child that is in such a scenario yes so um i, I spoke of anxiety so it can lead to anxiety because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow it can lead to behavioral acting out at school at home it can lead to um depression not feeling good enough. What about, um, you know, like you said, Chase uh, having exhibited during the uh, observation that you had, 
that there was some op oppositional behavior that you observed, Trichase, could that be a result of this non-permanency that the child is experiencing? Yes, it can be. Now, in this particular case, um, if the evidence were to show, well, let me ask you this before I go to that. Typically, in a sort of well-adjusted parent-child relationship, would you expect a parent to know, even if the child is not living them, where that child is attending school? Yes, it's been my experience that um, many parents seeking reunification with their child knows their child's school, um, oftentimes the child's teacher, because they ask those questions of either the caregiver or of their child. Um, so yes, you would, you know, they, they ask what their day's like, they usually know their interest, their favorite cartoon or toys, um, favorite foods. Yes, um, those types of questions and, and responses. What about knowing who the child's best friend or best friends are, the names of those children? Right, right. Who their friends are, who do they spend time with, <clears throat> all the sorts of things. You had talked about previously in part of your recommendations that you had visited, recommended frequent visits. Would you have wanted those visits to be on a face-to-face -face basis? Um, would that be the highest and best form of visitation between a parent and child? Yes, absolutely. Face-to-face -face is going to establish um, rapport. It's going to establish that attachment and bond um, better than um, a phone call or a video call. As and if the evidence showed that Ms. Puckett, since December of 2022, has only had three physical face-to-face -face visits with that child, would that satisfy your recommendation for frequent visitation between the mother and Chase? No, that's not. It's not. That's not enough to really facilitate building a bond, building an attachment, understanding your child's friends, their school, their daily life, um, affection. <laughs> You had talked about um, one of the measures from the PCRI was about support from others. Does that also encompass financial support from other individuals or can it? It can. It depends on how when the parent answers these questions, when they view support. Um, some people, when they when they think about support, it's really it's emotional support. Some individuals are going to be a combination of emotional and financial support. Um, but it does not specifically tease out financial support. And if the testimony and evidence in this case showed that up until as recent as three weeks ago, Chase was observed to be crying after a therapy session where the therapist had allegedly told him that his grandmother was not his mother and that Miss Puckett was his his mother. Does that also cause you to have concerns about what you were talking about as far as the lingering effects of non-permanency and the child being, you know, not sure that this is their family? Yes, absolutely. Now, um, I've got what's been marked as defects exhibit TPR exhibit number four, and this is for the court. And um, I know that you don't have, I didn't send this to you, but is this a let me just ask you a couple of things for the attachment and bonding assessment. Does that consist of eight pages? Eight pages, yes. And does it have on the first page a case ID number of 1787? And um, to your knowledge, is the DFACS exhibit number four, therefore, a true and accurate copy of the attachment and bonding assessment that you had prepared on behalf of Henry County DFACS? Yes. You want to tender DFACS exhibit number four into evidence at this time? Any objection? No, no objection. objection. It's admitted without objection. It's no questions. CPR for... exhibit number four. All right. No, uh, no uh, further questions for Dr. Hay for me, Your Honor. Yes, Paul, you any questions? Yes, Your Honor. During your assessment of mom, you stated that she disclosed a previous history of opioid, opioid use and a DUI. Yes. Okay. Did she state when that was? No, she was unwilling or unable to. Um, basically saying that she could not recall. And I don't know if it's because she did not want to or if she could not recall. Okay. Okay. And then also she had um, disclosed to you a previous diagnosis in her adolescence of bipolar disorder. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and stated that at, at least as of this time, she is not taking medication for that? Yes. During your assessment with her, did she seem 
Uh, or let me say this. Did you see any of the manifestation of bipolar disorder during your assessment? I did not see any overt signs of any um, significant mental health disorder. She was calm. Um, she was respectful um, and generally cooperative. Um, so there were no overt signs. Um, and I may, I may or may not see signs in a two in a two hour period. It honestly just depends on the um, extent of those symptoms. But no, no, there were no observations. Okay. Uh, are you aware of the stark difference between bipolar disorder and a bipolar schizophrenic? Um. Yes. Okay. And isn't it true that there are people who have bipolar disorder who are non medicated but continue to live? Um, fruitful lives without serious or severe manic episodes? Yes, that is okay. very true. Okay. And then that would be different from bipolar schizophrenics who typically without medication do exhibit those um, manic and, and 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 just the extreme of their, their disorder. Correct. And usually the paranoia makes it very difficult to maintain employment or housing or friendships or yes. Okay. So by virtue of myths, um, at least from what you observe, observe, even if it was a two-hour um, timeline or a two-hour time frame, uh, her not taking medication by itself with her being diagnosed with bipolar disorder does not necessarily mean she would go out and be a harm to herself or others. Right, right. There's just not, there's just, that's true. There's just not enough information. Um, it sounds like she does not have an adult psychiatric history, has not been hospitalized. Um, so there was no um, indication of any severe mental health concerns based on my observations. Okay. Now, as we know, Chase has been with Ms. Kirkland for quite some time. Um, now, when a child is in the care of a person from infancy and say, to the age of four, is it uncommon for that child to refer to that parent as uh, that custodian as mom or dad? I'm sorry, is it uncommon? Is it uncommon for a child who has been in the care from a young age for many years? to refer to a custodian as mom or dad? Um, I see that very frequently, that that the child does identify their caregiver as mother or father. Okay. And when they have that extensive relationship with the caregiver, um, isn't it also true that they are less likely to associate their biological parents as their parents? Right. They're going to, yes, their view of that individual is not their view of a primary caregiver, not the ones providing those needs, those emotional and physical needs. So um, they may have an understanding because they're being told this is your biological mother or this is your biological father. But in the construct of how we identify a parent, a mother or father, we're going to identify based on who it is that takes care of us on a daily basis. Okay. So when Chase seems to be able to engage with Miss Puckett um, comfortably, but not necessarily identify her or it, well, treat her as a mom with the, the affections of a mother, that's not something that would be uncommon in a situation such as this. Isn't that correct? Well, I have seen children, they they really want that love and affection from the, the parent, even though it's not the primary caregiver, because they have an understanding that it is a mother or father. And typically that mother and father will attempt to engage the child as a parent. Um, so so I would say no, in most of these attachment and bondings that I see, the child is is wanting, um, sometimes demanding um, affection from the parent, by, I'm sorry, the biological parent. Um, now, now, in those cases, are these children, are these children who have been in the care of the custodian from infancy until four or five years old, that they're still wanting the parent or craving the parent affection? Sometimes it is. And sometimes, right. There's so many various factors, but um, I, I think I kind of hear what you're saying. And, and, and what it's, what it says to me that Chase was not overtly engaged with Miss P Puckett as his biological mother is that should reunification occur, they need a parental child bond. And the only way to build that is going to be through face-to-face -face visitations. Um, as opposed if there's video um, visitations and very infrequent physical contact face-to-face. -face. Okay. And so in situations where the child is attached to the custodian as mom or dad, um, what do you suggest, or, or if at all, that a custodian does to help the child understand that 
the biological parent, this is mom, I'm, you know, this individual still letting them have that security, but encouraging that understanding that, you know, there is this other parent or there is this biological parent and wanting to the efforts to maintain that relationship. Yes. So um, oftentimes that's where a family therapist can really help the custodian. It doesn't have to be long term, you know, but a few sessions to really um, just help provide some guidance. And especially if that therapist knows the child, they're able to um, to give some specific guidance based on what they know about the child as well. Um, and of course, you know, um, Chase is very young, he's six, and it is a kind of a fragile, delicate balance because he has been with her, um, his, I'm sorry, with his grandparents for a significant amount of time. And no, I'm sure nobody wants to cause him any extra distress. Um, and that's where a good family therapist can really kind of help with that process um, because they're going to understand the developmental where the child is in their developmental functioning. Okay. So in a, in a situation such as this, not only do you believe that more face-to-face -face visits between Chase and Miss Puckett, but also family counseling. When you say family counseling, that's including Miss Kirkland, Miss Puckett, and Chase to yes. just address the dynamics and, and help Chase feel comfortable um, and reassure him. Yes. Um, the, re the research is going to suggest that the more family members that are involved, um, that would be the best outcome. Okay. Now, you previously were asked about, uh, you know, situations such as this where a parent will try to gather information from the custodian. So what school the child goes to, extracurriculars, other interests and friends. Now, have you seen situations or cases in which a parent may try to ascertain that information and a custodian refuses to provide it or blocks access to that? Um, I would I would say that very well could happen, especially if the custodian is present. Um, that could happen, depending on the circumstance, you know, depending on the custodian and where their emotions are regarding um, raising the child and things, factors such as that. Um, parental alienation. I, I was trying to think of the word. So sometimes that, that does happen. Okay. Absolutely. Um, and then have you seen cases where children are successfully re uh, reunified with their parents, even though the parent may not know who the best friend is or may not know the name of the school? or a name of the teacher, but they do have some of the other basic information as it pertains to the children, their interests and, and so on. I, I think that out, the research shows that the outcome of reunification, um, I haven't seen that specific factor addressed, but I think it kind of umbrellas under just the parent having the desire to be actively involved in that child's life and the child being open and receptive to um, accepting um, of the, the new caregiver. Okay. But then the child being open and receptive still requires that comfort um, and that exposure to the biological parent. Comfort, exposure, attachment, bond. Um, uh, yes, all of those factors. Okay. Um, let's see. Overall, um, should the issue of more face to face visits be rectified? Do you find that it may? end up still being beneficial for Chase to ultimately or eventually be reunified with his mother, um, especially as long as he can continue to maintain a, a close bond with his grandparents? I think this um, this is a, a situation is that Miss um, Kirkland being a, a grandparent as opposed to a foster parent, um, that that would absolutely, should reunification occur, it would be incredibly important um, for Chase, on Chase's well-being, to continue to have his grandparents actively involved in his life. Um, and then in the inverse, should it be a situation where they terminate, um, and seeing as we're talking about termination of one child, though he has five other siblings, would it be necessary or do you find it imperative that Chase still be able to maintain a relationship with his mother, seeing as he has multiple siblings through that mother? Um. I think, clinically speaking, that it'll be important for Chase growing up to continue to have contact with siblings and biological parents that are able to actively, you know, engage and have healthy relationships. That's always going to be the best factor. Um, and it's only when a parent's not able to be, the, uh, I'm sorry, a, a non-custodian parent, um, if they have substance abuse history, history or uh, I'm not sorry, history use, current use, um, or or in some way 
um, harmful to the child, then that's when um, healthy boundaries should be put in place where the child have no contact. Okay, no further questions at this time. Ms. Miller? Are you aware that Ms. Uh, Puckett lives in Indiana? Um, yes, ma'am. She Well, she reported that, yes. And so the the face to face visitation, as as you recommended, may not be an option. And are you aware of that? Yes, I know that that puts a very big barrier in place. Yes. So re reunification may never be achieved in this case if if, if these recommendations uh, couldn't be followed. Is that correct? It's going to be incredibly important for Chase and Miss Puckett to have these face to face visitations to facilitate a healthy attachment and bond. And, and I, 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 I feel for the situation. And at some points, um, it may be where Ms. Puckett has to relocate in order to do what's in the best interest of her relationship with the child. Or as you've pointed out, he'll have the lingering effects of having non-permanency if it just continues to go on and on and on, and there's no face to face and he can't reunify. Correct. I have nothing further, Judge. Redirect. If, if, if I be to, Your Honor, if I'd be allowed to piggyback off of that. Um, Ask Mr. Mr. Um, Mr. Does this redirect? If he has any, then I'll let you. I do. Um, Dr. Haig, um, Ms. Sapalier was asking you about um, whether or not you had observed any kinds of uh, mental health symptoms, for lack of a better term, during the observations, and you said no. But was there behaviors that you did observe about Ms. Puckett during the um, the observations that did cause you to have some concerns? There <clears throat> there was. Um, the concern was that during the um, entire two-hour process, Miss Puckett did exhibit an odd movement of her lips, of her mouth, that is sometimes seen in individuals who are under the influence of substances. Um, however, because I do not have any other observations of her, I cannot say that that's what I observed. However, um, this was pointed out to the department and the department did say that she was getting um, drug tested on that same day. I think Ms. Folliard was asking you about, again, you know, if there were to be continued face-to-face -face visits and not, you know, to try to establish or, or to put into place this bond. But given the fact that, as I told you before, the testimony has been that there's only been three face-to-face -face visits since the time of this bonding assessment having been done. And one of those occurred you know, during the time of the bonding assessment, do you, I mean, do you have any, any feelings one way or the other about whether continued time to pursue further visits would be beneficial or detrimental to Chase? <clears throat> so Chase has been with his grandparents for a significant amount of time in terms of his lifespan. I, <clears throat> and I would say that if frequent visitations in person cannot be put into play in con meaning that continued vi video visits are the only option. I, I just do not see it, their attachment and bond being able to move forward. And what happens is you continue to have these lingering effects of being in foster care or, or being, um, I guess in, in state custody legally. Um, Should Chase continue to be placed with his grandparents um, and not and he not be reunified with his mother, then I would say the continued visit video visits um, are, are are recommended that he continue to have at least a relationship with his mother until and unless it causes him um, you know distress um, in some way. Um, it becomes an unhealthy relationship, in other words. But if it can be healthy and he can have a relate no have a relationship with her. Then that's that's what's in the best interest of him. Really, is to um, to have permanency, to have attachment and bonds with those who care for him, custo you know as custodians, and for him to continue to have relationships with siblings and, and other family members. And you had talked about that Chase is um, you know six years old. He was actually almost seven when you saw him for your attachment. He's got the December birthday, so at the time that you saw him, he was almost seven years old. Correct. Yes, that's right. And he's now going to be almost eight years old. Mm -hmm. So given that, that this child has been in care for this extended period of time, as we've already discussed, and given that the child has, you know, expressed to his caregiver that 
the uh, his and his preference would remain be remain with where he is with Ms. Kirkland. So if he were to continue to have a relationship with Ms. Puckett, wouldn't you, based on your testimony and evidence, have concerns about that being, you know, to the point of being an unhealthy relationship then at this point? It it would it would really depend on and just because I haven't had the opportunity to speak with Chase about his feelings and, and kind of how he views the views his biological mother. It's really hard for me to say, but he has been in the care of the Kirklands for the majority of his life. He has established routine friendships, school, um, a life um, that um, I guess based on testimony, according to, to yourself, he wants to stay there. Um, and all that should be taken in consideration for his well-being, for him to be removed from a positive, healthy environment in which he has attachment and bonds could significantly affect his emotional and behavioral functioning, um, especially if he does not have an attachment and bond with who he is placed with. Okay, fair enough. Another question, John. All right, Ms. Pollard, you had a question? Yes. Um, you made mention about the odd lit movements what, what 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 do you consider odd lit movements it's i wish i could you one may be able to google it i, I don't know if it is a a medical term but it's um it's very noticeable if you've seen it you, you kind of know um and I, i'm sorry it's it's a constant pursing of the lips um it it could be due to like really dry mouth and it kind of like causes um, weird facial muscle spasms around the lips and kind of into the cheeks a little bit. Um, and I, and it's because she has an opioid, a reported history of opioid, opioid abuse. And because I observed that it is noteworthy. It does not mean one is due to the other. It is simply noteworthy. If she had never had any drug history, it, I would say, you know, medically she might need to be evaluated because there could be something going on with the muscles. Um, I'm sorry, I can't speak much about it because it's outside I, my realm of expertise. But to me, it was noteworthy to report because of that history of abuse. Have you ever have you ever had a situation in which you saw the um, you saw these movements and it was later determined that there was no opioid opioid eh, opioid use by the parent? I have to say. Um, I have not. Um, unfortunately, whenever I have observed this was when I was on my internship years ago and did a okay. rotation at a substance abuse treatment facility. That's been my only experience with it. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't talk more about that. Oh, no, I understand. So th it's not something that you're too familiar with. It's it's just it is it's a noteworthy it. observation. Okay. Okay. A parent. So if a if a parent moves, does this turn into essentially a carte blanche where they have to lose custody because they are now unable to do the face-to-face -face visits? Of course not. It's such a hard, probably highly debatable thing because sometimes you have to do what's in your best interest, the adult's best interest, which may be financially, I don't know, it could be a good job. Um, as an example, it could be escaping an abusive relationship. I, um, you know, you, sometimes you just have to make difficult decisions. And I understand that. And I would never want to say because a parent moves away from a child means they can never have be reunified with their child, but it does create obstacles. Okay. And sometimes those obstacles may not always be in the best interest of the child. And you may mention that, you know, maybe Miss Puckett can um, step up and try to come to, will come down here for visits. Um, if the, if we are all here for the best interest of the child, wouldn't it also make sense for the custodian to try to make efforts to also meet the parent halfway, whether, whether it's literally halfway or um, alternating or at least doing whatever it is that they can in helping facilitate face-to-face -face visits. Absolutely. I mean, whatever anybody could do. Now, my concern is that it has been so many years um, that this, that, that has taken this long for possibly an agreement to come into play, but, um, and, and, um, but obviously everybody working together is going to be the best thing um, for, for the child. No further questions. Anything further from this witness? Not from me, Your Honor. Can she be excused? Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you, Dr. Hay. We appreciate your time. Thank you. You're excused. Thank yes, you, Mr. Skoronek. Mr. Skoronek, Your Honor. Okay. Yeah. How, long have you been, how long have you been with Henry County DFAX, Mr. Turnipseed? A little over nine years. 
and you're currently a foster care case manager for the Department of Family and Children's Services. Correct. Have you been a foster care case manager for the majority of the nine years that you've been with the department? Yes. Um, and are you currently licensed or certified as a social worker by the state of Georgia? Yes. Has your certification ever been revoked or suspended in any way? Myself? No, it has not. Okay. I don't know why. Is it is it me or is it not coming no, through? I didn't hear him. Didn't hear any response at all. Okay. All right. Um, and Mr. Turnipseed, um, are you required to undergo yearly or regular training to maintain your certification to work for the Department of Family and Children's Services? Yes, I have to complete training for that. Yes. All right. And approximately how many other cases or children do you have on your current foster care load? Uh, 14. Say that again. I'm sorry. 14. 14. And do you have an idea as to roughly how many cases that you may have worked in the nine years that you've been with the Department of Family and Children's Services? Roughly um, at least about 30 cases, minimum 30. Did you work for the Department of Family and Children's Services or work for any other child protective service agency prior to coming with the Henry County defects? No, I did not. That's the weirdest thing. Why are you on here twice? I logged on to my phone due to the issues with the computer. Ah, okay. I tender Mr. Turner, to be an expert in the area of child dependency welfare. Anybody care to vote on his qualifications in that field? No, sir. No, Your Honor. All right. We'll find him an expert in that field and let him testify accordingly. All right. Uh, tell the court, Mr. Turnip seat, if you would, how long have you been the case manager for Chase? I took over the case. I want to say it was in March of 22. March of, so since March of 2022? Correct. So you've been the case manager for, oh God, a year and a half, right? Yeah, a little over a year and a half. And um, did you, when you took this case over in March of 2022, or since that time, have you reviewed the Department and Family and Children's Services record as to this child prior to becoming the case manager? I did look over the history. Um, it's a lot of history due to the child coming into care in 2018. And this child came into the department's care in September of 2018. Is that correct? Correct. And, and those were due to the mother having abandoned the child, her whereabouts being unknown, and the biological father at that time not having legitimated this child. Is that correct? Correct. And was there a case plan established for possible reunification between the mother and the child? Yes. And was that established by order of this court dated October 29th, 2018? Correct. Right. As part of that case plan, Ms. Puckett was required to undergo various assessments. She was required to undergo the psychological, parental fitness, a substance abuse assessment, domestic violence assessment, and follow the recommendations from all of those assessments, correct? Correct. Right. And then she was required to also undergo random drug and alcohol screens as requested, have a minimum of 12 consecutive months of negative drug screens, refrain from illegal drug use, um, and with the results of those screens to be reported to the court, correct? Correct. And then she also, at the time of this her mother's removal, had some pending criminal charges that she was to resolve, correct? Correct. Let me just to touch on that one real bit quickly. I'm going to go back to all the other lists here that I got in a second. To your knowledge, has Ms. Puckett uh, resolved the criminal charges that she had outstanding for her, I believe, in Clayton County, Georgia? Correct. Do you recall when that was that Ms. Puckett resolved those? I want to say that was in September of 22. 22 or 23? 22. Right. Because I thought there was some outstanding warrant for some kind of failure to pay a fine and that she took care of that this year. I guess I'm misremembering. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm not. I'm not aware of that, Your Honor. I'm just aware of the Clayton one. But um, you... well, she, Miss uh, uh, Puckett, told us about it at a hearing. So it seems like it's been this year, but maybe it was last year when it was told. Go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, the next goal was Miss Puckett was to obtain and maintain stable housing and employment for six consecutive months and provide proof of that to the department. Correct. Right. And to visit visit with the children is scheduled. Correct. Correct. And then cooperate with the department and its providers, correct? 
Correct. And then notify the department of any change in address or phone numbers within 48 hours. Is that right? Correct. During the time that you've been the case manager since March of 2022 until today's date, have you made regular monthly contact with Ms. Puckett? Yes. During those regular monthly contacts, have you discussed what was uh, expected of Ms. Puckett under her case plan? Yes, we discussed our case plan monthly. Did Ms. Puckett appear to or understand what was required of her by the department's case plan that was established in October of 2018? Yes. The initial permanency plan for the mother and Chase, I mean, actually as siblings, but now just as the Chase, was reunification. Is that correct? Correct. And was that permanency plan changed to concurrent plans of reunification, non-reunification, TPR, uh, adoption or termination of parental rights adoption? Correct. Was that done initially in June of 2019? Yes. So that was over four years ago that the department requested a change in permanency plan to concurrent plans, correct? Correct. Has the department previously filed a petition to terminate parental rights as to the mother on this in this case? Yes, they did file previously. Okay. And was that done in February of 2021? Correct, with the previous case manager. Okay. And then was that previous petition for termination of parental rights as to Ms. Puckett withdrawn or dismissed by the department in June of 2021? It was withdrawn. It, but, it, but again, that was done in June of 2021, correct? Correct. And that's over two years ago. Correct. Correct. And was that done in an effort to allow Ms. Puckett additional time to meet the requirements of her case plan goals? Correct. Now, the putative father, the legal father of this child was Mr. Tizon Jones, correct? Correct. And Mr. Jones had undergone DNA testing showing that he was, in fact, the biological father of Chase. Is that right? Correct. And Mr. Jones did, in fact, get an order from this court declaring him to be the legal and legitimate father of this child. Is that right? Correct. And that was done back uh, also on the 17th of June of 2021. Is that correct? Correct. And at that time, the name of uh, Chase was changed from his previous name of Saul Hales to Chase. Correct. Now, under the mother's case plan and her assessments, was she recommended under her assessments to undergo cognitive behavioral therapy, psychiatric care, trauma therapy, random drug screens, parenting classes, and individual therapy? Correct. Have you received any evidence that the mother has been under the under psychiatric care with any individual who is a licensed psychiatrist? No. You heard the mother's testimony earlier from today. And bear with me while I find that. That she was seeing a Nikki Thompson for therapeutic services as of August of 2023. Were you aware of that? Yes. Okay. Have you been able to uh, speak uh, with uh, Ms. Thompson with regards to the services that she is providing to Ms. Puckett? I was not able to speak with Ms. Thompson, but the front desk did verify who uh, Ms. Nicole Thompson was. Did you ever ask Ms. Puckett to sign a release of information or a similar form in order for you to be able to make contact with Ms. Thompson and speak with her? I let her know when she told me about it that she would have to sign a release of information. Okay. Did you ever sign, send her a release of information for Ms. Puckett to sign? No, I did not send the release of information. Ms. Puckett was supposed to sign it with um, the group that she attends, Ms. Ellie Mental Health. Okay. So she was going to go, so i make sure I'm clear. She was going to go to Ms. Thompson and sign a release for Ms. Thompson to talk to you. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Did that ever happen? Um, when I spoke to the front receptionist, they didn't have one on file for uh, Ms. Puckett. Have you ever spoken with Ms. Thompson directly with regards to any of the services that Ms. Puckett alleges that she is providing to Ms. Puckett? No, I haven't had a chance to speak with Ms. Thompson, only the front desk. And the information they gave was that Ms. Thompson is a, a licensed social worker and she only does talk therapy. All right. So I'm sorry to make sure I understood correctly. The information you were provided was that Ms. Thompson was a licensed social worker? Correct. And it, was any information ever provided to you that this Ms. Thompson was a psychologist? 
I believe when I spoke with uh, Ms. Puckett, it was about the psychi psychiatric because she stated that Ms. Hughes told her that she needed a therapist there with her in the state of Indiana. Okay, that's not my question. My question was, did anybody from Ms. Thompson's office report to you when you made contact? You said they said she was a social worker. Did they say she was anything other than a social worker? No. So do you have, since you took this case over in March of 2022, Mr. Turnipseed, have you ever gotten from Ms. Puckett or anyone who claims to have been treating Ms. Puckett documentation showing that she was under the care of a licensed psychiatrist? No. Was Ms. Puckett provided individual counseling services of any kind by the Department of Family and Children's Services? Yes, she was provided individual services. All right. Who was her counselor? When I took over the case, Ms. Hughes did her individual and family. Have you received any documentation from Ms. Hughes that the Ms. Puckett has successfully completed individual and or family counseling? Yes, I spoke to Ms. Hughes the week before Thanksgiving break, and she was saying that they were going to finish up the last hours that they had for this week and that she was done with family and individual. Have you received any documentation to that effect? Not as of yet, but Ms. Hughes did say she was under the weather that she was ill these past uh, week and a half. Has Ms. Puckett attended and completed the recommended parenting classes from her assessments? Yes. Who did that? I believe she completed those with New Height. Have you received documentation that, showing that Ms. Uh, Puckett successfully completed those? Yes. I'm sorry, was that a yes or a no? Yes. Next, I want to ask you about the random drug and alcohol screens. When was the last time that the mother underwent a drug and alcohol screen for the Department of Family and Children's Services? The last completed by the department was in December of 2022 when she came to complete her bonding assessment. What kind of drug screen was that? Hair follicle and urine. What were the results? They were both negative. Okay. Prior to December of 2022, when was the next or the most recent drug screen that Ms. Puckett had undergone prior to that date for the department? Prior to that date that's listed was back in April of 21. April of 2021? Correct. And what kind of drug screen was that? I want to say that was a urine, a urine screen. What were the results of that screen? Um, it was positive for opiates, methadone, um, amoxicillin. I believe mom had a recent dental uh, surgery. I'm sorry, what was the date of that? That was in April of 21. Thank you. Okay. All right, that's over three years ago. So in... Um, just to be clear, since April of 2021, she had a urine screen and a hair and a urine screen in December of 2022. Have you received any other drug screens uh, for Ms. Puckett? Yes, um, Ms. Puckett sent me a copy of the screen that she took for her job with Amazon. Um, that was at affordable alcohol and drug screening, and those results were negative. That was on August of 23 of this year. You're breaking up. Say that again. Yes, she completed a screen for her job with uh, Amazon, and that was in August of this year, and the results were negative. All right. And what was the date of that screen? It was August 25th. Of 2023. Correct. Right. Okay. Any other screens for Ms. Bucket other than April 21st, December 20th of 2022, in August of 2023 that you have received from Ms. Bucket or from any uh, service provider for the department? Those are the only ones. Okay. So during this case plan that has been in effect, do the department's records reflect that the mother has ever had 
12 consecutive months of negative drug screens? No. Have you ever had Ms. Puckett contact you with regards to concerns that Ms. Kirkland was preventing her from having contact with Chase in any way? Mom didn't say issues of contact. I believe it was more of concerns as far as um, the control and not being able to speak freely with him. You speak freely with whom? Chase. What, if anything, did the department do with regards to Ms. Puckett's concerns about that issue? That's when Ms. Hughes became involved and Ms. Kirkland could no longer be a part of the sessions. Since you have been the case manager from March of 2022, has Ms. Puckett, to your knowledge, had any unsupervised visitation with Chase? No. Has she ever had, since you've been the case manager from March of 2020 through, through today's date, any overnight visits with Chase? No. Has the mother ever provided any financial support for the care take for the care of um, Chase to the department. Not to the department, no. Let's talk a little bit about Ms. Puckett's employment. Since um, you heard Ms. Puckett's testimony that she was employed or has been employed at Amazon since May of this year, you heard that, correct? Correct. Has Ms. Puckett provided you with any evidence showing that she is, in fact, employed at Amazon? Yes. What has she provided to you? Ms. Um, Puckett provided pay stubs, and she provided me with a copy of um, her actual the job letter stating that she was receiving a position with Amazon as long as um, she completed her drug screen and background. It was a, an official offer letter pending everything was completed. Let's talk about the pay stubs. How many paycheck stubs has Ms. Puckett provided to you um, showing that she has been working at Amazon? She has provided three pay stubs. All right. And she claims to have been employed at Amazon since May. So that should have been at least six paycheck stubs during that period of time, correct? Correct. Has Ms. Puckett provided to you any explanation as to why she has not provided you with any of the other alleged pay stubs from Amazon? Um, no, besides that she would get them to me. See, I'm sorry, I missed that. Nothing besides that she would get them to me. So you have had a discussion with Ms. Puckett about these missing paycheck stubs. Correct. And has Ms. Puckett ever provided these missing paycheck stubs to you? No. Other than the Amazon job, has Ms. Puckett, since March of 2022, since you took this case over, provided you with paycheck subs for any other employment outside of Amazon? No. Prior to the last court date that we had um, on October 31st, you want to give me one second? I just need to stand up and stretch for a second. Can we have a bathroom break? Oh, that would be wonderful. Absolutely not. No, no way. The one that Mr. Scavrani took, he took for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I would appreciate it. I think, Ms. Pollier, do we all vote for a break? You can, you can have a quick break because somebody's come to get me to sign some papers. So you got okay, it, you. as long as it takes <laughs> me to sign these papers. Can I continue? Proceed, proceed away, please. Okay, thank you. So, Mr. Turnipseed, I was going to ask you about them. I think the last time we were going to be scheduled for this hearing was October 31st. And then we reset again for Ms. Pollier to have some time to prepare with her client. But um, just prior to that, you uh, sent me some documentation. So I wanted to ask you, um, with regards to housing, has Ms. Pocket provided you with a current lease for her current residence? Yes. Okay. Was that release um, provided to you back, back in April of this year when I, I believe it was set to renew? But I could be confusing this case. Yes, um, she did send it in. All right. So then I wanted to ask you, you heard Ms. Puckett's testimony about that she's currently residing in a two-bedroom apartment 
with herself and her three other children. You heard that, right? Correct. Did you have some discussions with Ms. Puckett where she advised you that she was going to try to find um, a larger apartment? Yes. Um, during one of our monthly contacts, she discussed wanting to get a larger unit for her kids. Okay. Was to prepare for her kids if she was to reunify. So to date, have you gotten any documentation from Ms. Puckett that actually shows any efforts on her part to obtain larger housing? I don't have them in my emails. She would normally email them to me. So the answer to my question is she's not provided you with any such documentation? No. Uh, okay, again, yeah, let me rephrase that because you said no. <laughs> my question was, this is that Ms. Bucket has not provided you with any documentation showing she has obtained, tried to obtain uh, larger housing for herself and her children. Is that correct? Correct. So with regards to the child's current placement, the child has been placed with Mr. and Ms. Kirkland since 2018, correct? Correct. Have you had an opportunity or chance to observe Chase in the home with Mr. Kirkland, Ms. Kirkland, and their children? Yes. Tell the court what you've observed about how the child is doing in that home. Um, Chase moves through the home freely. Uh, he definitely plays with the um, four-year-old. Um, he also plays with the oldest child, um, oldest stepson, Landon. Um, he interacts with everyone in the home with no issues. Um, pretty much he has his own space to where he can come and go from, whether they're outside playing or he wants to be by himself in the room. Um, he expresses no concerns or any issues with being with Ms. Kirkland. And have you had any discussions about or with Chase about where he would like to live on a permanent basis? Yes. What has he told you? Um, I speak with Chase monthly, knowing that uh, family therapy was going on with Ms. Puckett. I asked him if he had a choice where he wants to stay, and he chose Ms. Kirkland. I asked him if he would be willing to go visit with his mom. Um, he said no. I said, uh, would you do it if Ms. Kirkland was present? He said yes. But um, when it comes to Chase, you can't ask him too many questions as far as him leaving Ms. Kirkland because he'll withdraw from the conversation. Have you had any discussions with Chase about the potential for him to be adopted by Mr. and Ms. Kirkland? Um, I didn't ask him about being adopted. I just asked him if he would be happy if he would end up staying with Ms. Kirkland permanently. Does Chase, during your, your home visits, does he appear to have bonded with Ms. Kirkland and her family? Yes, um, he is extremely bonded with the family. And can you give the court some examples of what you've observed in the home that leads you to come to that conclusion? Um, Chase chimes in on different things. Um, I can enter the home and, you know, he's happy to see me, ready to tell me about, you know, his um, Boy Scouts or the things he has going on at school. Um, he talks about different things that they do as a family there, especially like vacations and, you know, when they're scheduled to go to do things. Um, he actually remembers as far as what month. And a lot of times kids don't remember dates. When you talk to Chase about his mother, what does he call his mom? Um, he has said Felicia a couple of times and he has also said mom. But when he talks about her, um, it's almost like. Like he feels forced. And like I said, I can't bring up too much to him when it comes to that. Just the basics, because he'll withdraw from the conversation. And what does he refer to Ms. Kirkland and Mr. Kirkland as? Um, he definitely says Ma and Pa. Is that a prospective adoptive placement for Chase if the court were to terminate Ms. Puckett's parental rights to the child? Yes. And is the department asking at this time that the court terminate the mother's parental rights that Chase be made available for adoption? Yes. Is the department aware of any substantial property that the child might stand to inherit from Ms. Puckett? No. I, this has just occurred to me uh, a few minutes ago. When Mr. Jones was murdered back in 2022, do you, are you aware of whether or not his estate was ever probated or anything like that? Has anyone ever contacted you about that? No, I'm not aware of that. Okay. Are you aware of Mr. Jones, the deceased father, having any substantial assets that Chase may stand to inherit from him? Not that he disclosed to me. I don't think I have any other questions for Mr. Turnipseed, Your Honor. Ms. Pollard? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Turnipseed, you said you were part of this case for about a year and a half. Right. Okay. And so what all was left for mom to do when you inherited this case? 
when I inherited the case, mom was scheduled to complete her bonding assessment and follow all recommendations. Okay. She was and, able to uh, resolve her legal matters. Okay. And so her pre so the other um items that were on her case plan have been satisfied thus far. Correct. Okay. What about, what about so, the drug screens? Yes, I'm sorry, the drug screens and visitation. I'm sorry, I forgot about those. Well he, he mentioned the follow the recommendation and those recommendations were part of the assessment. Um, the assessment. So I, I did understand that aspect of it. Okay. So going in, mom was to have the drug screens, the visitation. I, I believe those were the only two things. Is that correct? And the uh, bonding assessment and provide well, the papers. With so the following statement. the bonding assessment, it was stated that she, they, they recommended that she has the visitation with um, Chase, um, extensive visitation with Chase. Is that correct? Right. Okay. And then you were also supposed to do the drug screening. Is that correct? Yes. Drug screening. Mom was supposed to provide pay stubs and she was supposed to maintain stable house. Okay. Um, and she's provided you for the lease for her where she currently resides. Yes. Up until March of next year. Okay. Um, and she has been at that residence for at least two or three years, I believe. Is that correct? Two. I, I didn't hear anything. <laughs> You said, you said two or three years. He said two. Two, two years. Okay. Um, and then with the pay stub, you said you received three pay stubs from mom from Amazon. Is right. that correct? Okay. What month or what months or time period were those pay stubs? Okay. So mom has one pay stub here from May 3rd of 23 till <laughs> June 2nd of 23. The next pay stub overlaps. It goes from May 30th through the 28th of June. And the last pay stub is from the 3rd of July through the 8th of August. Okay. And then when did she inform you that she started working there? Uh, Mom informed me that she would be working there um, in May. She just had to finish the process. And that's when she emailed the um, offer letter pending that she completed the drug screens and everything. Okay. Um, and she reported to you that she is still working at Amazon? Correct. Okay. Now, the drug screen, it was, it, it was the department's responsibility to have mom drug screen. Isn't that correct? Yes, that started when mom was living in the state of Georgia as well. Okay. Um, and once mom moved, what efforts did the department make to have her screened? The department looked into sister agencies that were licensed through the state of Georgia and Illinois. Um, they did take on the contract to where mom would have to call in. However, they ended services and they no longer partnered with that agency. And then after that, did you attempt to make any other, try any other means of um, making sure mom does the drug testing? We reached out, but due to the fact that our providers are contracted through the state of Georgia, we're not able to just contract out of state. Okay. So, would, would you have been able to tell mom, contact mom and tell her she had 24 hours to go get tested and have the results sent to you at a reputable um, drug testing facility? Mom was always able to go to a drug testing facility and send in those results. I understand that. However, we, we also know that if mom chose when she was going to go, then the question is going to be, it's not random. So my question to you is, could you not have informed mom that she had 24 hours to go to a lab court or some type of reputable testing facility so that she can still have the random testings in 12 months of random testings? Did you consider that at all? If, uh, I asked, did you consider that at all? We did not consider that due to mom's financial issues. Did you even ask her if that's something that she would be able to do? Or you assumed that she wouldn't be able to do it? Mom has stated that she didn't have the financial means. To do the testing or in general? In general. So my question to you was, did you ask her if she would be able to do so for the sake of testing? No, I did not. Okay. So how did the department... How did the department expect mom to have 12 months of random drug screening if they had no way of providing her some type of service to do so? Ms. Puckett agreed that she would come down to visit the kids monthly. And during that time, we stated that she would be screened and that she would need to notify the department when she comes down to visit the kids. Okay. And then when she mentioned that she was unable for financial reasons, when she, she's having financial issues, the department just said, okay, well, all well. No, um, mom did come down some months and not notify the department. So that was one of the issues that happened when she did come down to visit with the kids. 
So you, you're talking about the December and the February visits. My mom came down prior to that as well, but the department was only aware of her coming down in December because that's when she scheduled her appointment for her bonding assessment. Oh, wow. Now, the visitation. Um, the bonding assessment recommended the bonding assessment recommended that mom have frequent face-to-face -face visits. Is that correct? Correct. What has the department done to help mom facilitate those face-to-face -face visits? We let mom know that once she arrived here for the visits, we would set up supervised visits and transportation for the kids to where mom would be staying. Are there any other services that the department has that can help facilitate those visits? No, the, the department did not offer any other services to help mom besides when she came to Georgia to help her facilitate those visits and make the children available. Did the department ask Ms. Kirkland if she would be willing to meet mom halfway or to go to Indiana so mom could have those visits? No, we did not. Did the department discuss with mom potential maybe gas vouchers or anything else that can help facilitate to help her facilitate those visits? The department did not offer gas vouchers or anything to Ms. Tuckey. Okay. So if mom not being local is the main issue with respect to her not being able to do the drug screening for at your facility and the visitation, how is that what does the department do to help rectify the situation? How how is the department helping to reunify a parent and child if if they're not taking those steps? We are doing the things that was offered to Miss Bucket before she decided to leave to move to Indiana. Okay. But that's with the understanding that she had more support and more an ability to get more financial stability and job offers in Indiana, which she didn't have here in Georgia. Is is that well, not what she expected you? Yes, we as a department did not know that when Miss Bucket initially left. But she did later express that to you. She later expressed that once she got herself situated in Indiana. But she did inform you that the move was because she did not have those opportunities in Georgia. Isn't that correct? After the fact that we were able to locate her. Okay, after the fact. So if mom were to remain in Georgia with no job, no housing, she still would be in a situation where the department would recommend terminating her parental rights. If that was the case, I don't know what her future would have been staying in Georgia, but yes. Okay, that, that sounded like that was a yes and no answer. So if mom remained in Georgia with no housing and no job, but was able, able to do the drug screen and the, um, the visitation, would the department still recommend terminating parental rights? Yeah, yes. I'm going to object to that. That calls for speculation. That's not the situation we have. If she wants to ask about what we've got going on now, but that, that calls for absolutely speculation on the part of this witness. It's, it, speculation would be what he thinks the mother would do. My question is, if the department had a parent who was here and did not complete these two aspects, would they recommend ter um, terminating parental rights? With the, number of cases had, it, Sorry, it, with the number of cases that the department has had, if he, he can say, no, we've never terminated parental rights for a person who didn't have a job and a place to live. That's not speculating. That's what is the history? Yeah, you know, he can go back to the history of the cases. Go ahead and finish your um, response, Mr. Scobronic. All right. So my objection, Your Honor, is, again, it does call for speculation. It calls for speculation about what would the department do? And that depends on whatever the fact situation then may have been, which is unknowable. And so, again, this, it calls for this witness to speculate what the department's administration, supervisors, you know, all of that stuff that gets taken into place. And that's not an appropriate question to be asking. You know, if she wants to ask specifics about the actual where we are at today, that's one thing. But to ask about, well, if this would have happened, that's that's not a, not, that's not a proper question. I'm going to overrule the objection and allow him to, if he has an answer, he can answer his own cross-examination and I'll give it whatever weight, if any, I find it appropriate to give based on his probative value, if any. Go ahead and ask your question or finish asking it. Oh, uh, so I was asking if mom were back in Georgia and, but uh, did not have employment and did not have a place to stay, would it be within the policy of the department to still move for termination of parental rights? It is likely that the department would possibly move towards terminating parental rights. Okay. So then it seems whether mom is here and has no place to stay or in Indiana and the department can't provide services, 
termination of parental rights is the route that department is going. Sorry, could you repeat that again? Somebody called on my phone and I couldn't hear you. I said, so whether it's mom in Georgia where she can visit and do drug screening but not have a place to stay or a job, or mom in Indiana where she has a place to stay and a job but can't, the department can't provide drug screening or help facilitate visitation, TPR is the route that the department is going or is likely to go. TPR is the route due to the length of the case being open, mom being given substantial time to complete her case plan, not only her just moving to Indiana and doing the things that she did, other factors were factored in when it came to TPR and on this bucket. The, depart uh, the department, all, well, mom also has two other children um, and two other, well, two other children that have cases with the department in Georgia, isn't that correct? Correct. But the department isn't seeking TPR as it pertains to those two children. No, they're not. So why Chase? At this time, Chase is the only person without a biological father. Otherwise, Chase would have been with his father at this time. So as he passed away, we had to continue to work with mom. But they, mom still has an open case with the other children. So whether there's a biological custody was given to the father. Oh, but my 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 state my question is, mom still has an open case with the other children. Is that correct? Mom does have an open case, but this is as to Chase. Okay, I understand that, but mom still has a case plan that she's expected to work from Indiana with those children as well. Isn't that correct? She is still working that plan, correct? Okay, and so this is a case plan that she, so the department can still work a case plan with mom in Indiana without having to terminate parental rights. Isn't that correct? It is possible, but however, the department is not choosing to go that route when it comes to Chase. So the department just wants to close out one of their cases. Is that, that be closed That's out not... the other case with the other two children when temporary custody was granted to the father. However, the courts left that open as we were still dealing with Chase. My, my question is the department. Just, my the question is that so the department wants to cut just close out this case as it pertains to Chase. Isn't that correct? It's not about closing out the case. It's about achieving permanency for this child on this case. No further questions. Ms. Miller. I don't have any questions, Judge. Redirect. Just a couple, Your Honor. I mean, uh, Mr. Turnipseed, with regards to Trinity and Tristan with Mr. Hales, as you indicated, that, that uh, those children are currently in the temporary custody of Mr. Hales, correct? Correct. And is, uh, that case is scheduled for a review, I believe, sometime next month. Is that correct? I believe it's tomorrow. I think we have a review yeah, for that. Yeah. And, um, and, does the, and that is the custody was given to those, Mr. Hales under uh, an aftercare order with regards to those children, correct? Correct. And the department had previously sought at the most recent review hearing, I believe, to terminate that aftercare order, but the court declined to do so, and that issue will be revisited at the next hearing. Is that also correct? I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? This somebody sure. called on the phone again. It's okay. Um, so my question was, is that at the last hearing, the department sought to, I believe, terminate the aftercare order as to Mr. Hales and the children in that case, correct? Correct. And the court did not, was not inclined to do that, but the department is continuing, uh, currently intends to continue to ask for the aftercare order uh, to be terminated as to Mr. Hales. Correct. And then have you had, um, with regards to uh, Ms. Polyard's questions about the drug screens. We did the drug screen in December when the mother came down for the bonding assessment that you already talked about. And again, explain why the department did not do a drug screen in February when the mother came for Trinity's birthday party. The department wasn't aware that mom was coming down to Trinity's birthday party. And during this case, Ms. Polyard has made uh, a number of questions to you about the barriers that have been put into place by Ms. Puckett moving from Georgia to Indiana. You recall those questions, right? Correct. But did was Ms. Puckett's vacating or moving out of the state of Georgia to go and live in Indiana, was that her choice? At this time, the department doesn't believe that it was her choice due to the fact that she had to have No, no, that's not my question, Mr. Kermsey. I'm sorry, maybe you misunderstood it. When Ms. Puckett moved out of state, that was her choice. No one made her do that, correct? Correct. And, well, I'll, I'll save that for closing argument, Your Honor. I've got some uh, 
I can address some of that with regards to the previous orders of this court. So that's the only questions I have for Mr. Turnipsey. All right. Call your next witness. Your Honor, there are no other witnesses from the department. So the department is rested. All right. Ms. Potter. Yes, I'd like to call Ms. Puckett. Okay. Now, prior to Mr. Turnipsey yes. becoming your caseworker, um, what issues have you had with respect to communication with the department? Do you mean with Ms. Knight? Yes. Um, more so communication issues, Ms. Knight was, I don't really know everything that she had going on, but I do know that my case sat on her desk for several months due to medical outings, and I wasn't getting services due to that, and my file was just sitting there. And yes, I did relocate based on housing. I had a newborn, it was COVID, and I had nowhere to stay. In oh, hold, on, hold on, hold on. And, just like it. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that, but hold, hold on. Just no, let me yeah. the questions um, that are being asked. So, um, upon, a lot of distracting background noise on somebody's call. I don't know who it is, but it's not helpful. Yes. Hello? So, um, when Mr. Turnipsey uh, became the caseworker, were you communicative with him? Yes. Okay. Did you provide him information as to your steps in following your case plan? Yes. Okay. So with respect to the psychiatric, did you contact Mr. Turnipseed and let him know that you were scheduled for um, psychiatric? Yes, I did. Okay. And did he respond to you about that? Yes. All right. And did you, in fact, take your psychiatric assessment? Yes, I did. Okay. Uh, did they require you to fill out um, a release or request one from the department? He told me that when, when I went to my session the following week that I had to sign a release so he and my family counselor, Ms. Hughes, could get the information to that. When you say he had to sign a release, who's he? I mean, I. He okay. said I had to, when I went to my next counseling session, I had to sign the release so that they could be privy to it. So when you went to that session, did you sign that release? Yes, I signed two, one for Ms. Turnosi and one for Ms. Hughes. Your knowledge that Miss Hughes received those documents? Um, I don't know if she received them, but I do know that I also did for Mr. Turner see an email showing that my counselor stated she reached out to Miss Hughes and Miss Hughes never contacted her back. Okay. Um, so to your knowledge, you've done everything you're supposed to do in having those releases executed for Mr. Turnipsy to uh, gather those records. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Now with Amazon, you're, you're still currently working at Amazon? Yes. Okay. Um, but you didn't have an opportunity to provide Mr. Turnipseed with more recent pay stubs? Your Honor, I'm going to object. Uh, I've let Ms. Pollard go a little bit, but she's leading the witness. Try not to lead your witness, please. I, I'll try yeah. not to. But we, we led Mr. Turnipseed all up and down. Ms. Direct. <laughs> I, 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 no, I, I, no, I did. Okay. no, I did not provide him anymore. Okay. Do you have additional pay stubs that can be provided? Yes. Okay. Um, now let's talk about the drug testing. Um, have you taken any drug testing on your own? Yes. Have you provided those to Mr. Turnipseed? Yes. Has Mr. Turnipseed provided you with any alternatives for the department to do random drug screenings? No. Have they made any suggestions? on what it is that you can do to help? The only, the only suggestion that was made was when we had a monthly and it was when I was coming down there monthly to visit my kids in person that I would get drug tested once a month. But then I was told that because they didn't know about the visits and they didn't count as visitations because they weren't aware that I was there. Okay. So you're saying that they said for you, when you come down for your visits, you could do the testing. But yes. the time came down, they weren't aware that those were visits. Is that, yes. is that what you said? Okay. Um, could you continue to do drive down and do those monthly visits? No. Why not? I had a previous and still ongoing family situation with my older two kids that the um, defects was very made aware of. Would you be able to do, uh, well, it wouldn't be random, but would, would you be able to do monthly 
res- monthly drug screenings and send them to DFACS? Yes. Okay. With a face-to-face visitation. Now, I, I, you, you stated that it's difficult to do the month to month. I'm sorry, the monthly drug screening. Would it also is it also difficult to do the monthly vis- face-to-face visits? Yes. Um, is it for the same reason as the difficulties for the drug screening? Um, no, not necessarily. This one is I have two school age children, um, and I have a three year old, and I'm a single parent, so that's why. Have you spoken to Miss Kirkland to see if there's a way that the two of you can come to some type of a, agreement or meet halfway or something? Yes, I have. I've had those talks with my mom. I tried to have them with Miss Eternal C as far as trying to work out a every other weekend or something to do the in-person visits. But also, as was stated before, there was the issue where I needed unsupervised visits because my kids had attached so much to my mom, they were not focused on me. And that was also the concern. And I mean, I guess, hey, well, that never got thought about. So nothing never went anywhere. Did you continue to um, reach out to the department? regarding um, trying to set up some type of face-to-face visits? Yes. Okay. Um, now, if Ms. Kirkland is able to, if you and Ms. Kirkland in the department are able to actually set up and schedule these face-to-face visits, whether it's week, every other week, once a month, is that something that you can um, commit yourself to? Yes. But it's, it, it takes two people, so it's not necessarily just my end. It takes the other end as well. Now, with respect to your housing, um, you heard testimony that Mr. Trentseed wasn't given any information um, about your efforts in trying to find a larger home. Um, did you contact Mr. Trentseed regarding trying to find different housing to accommodate all your children? Yes, I did. And when did you do that about? Um, it's not once. It's not really a one set thing. It was something that I talked to him about on um, many monthly visits with him virtually. Um, so I was trying to get a clear understanding. If I was going to get Trinity, of course, I need three, she meet her own room. But if it was just Chase, I had my apartment set up and, set, and sent Mr. Turnout to quite a few pictures and also did a walkthrough with him as well. Now, about... It came to your house in Indiana and you did a walkthrough or you did it on a video? It was virtual. Okay, that's what I thought. Go ahead. <laughs> now... <laughs> Now, with respect to these the virtual visits that you had with Chase, um, you recall testimony when in your cross examination where you say some of the visitation fluctuated. Yes. Okay. Um, were any visits made up? No. If, if, or, go, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No. Okay. It was just if we didn't have it, it was just move forward. Okay. And were visits uh, canceled on the part of the counselor? Yes. Right. Have you can- canceled any visits? Um, one, but not pertaining to Chase. Okay. Um, and when it, the visit was canceled by the therapist, did you ask to see if it was possible to have, um, to have a makeup visit? Well, when I talked to my counselor, Miss Hughes stated um, multiple times that she was waiting to hear back from Mr. Turnipsey. And she was, she needed an authorization form. Another reason was she had tried to get in touch with him for like three days and was not able to get in touch with him. So a lot of that, I guess, was bounced off of her and turn up seat saying that they need to contact each other. And I was just, you know, on standby, I guess. That's that was okay. Now, you're, you're asked questions about your knowledge of Chase's school, um, friends, likes, dislikes. Um, yeah. You didn't know where his school is, is there, or where his school was. Is there a reason why you don't know? I didn't know because my mom never informed me. I also didn't know with Trish and Trinity. I do know on a monthly with Mr. Turnipsey, he told me that I had the right to know that information. And he did read off some um, as statements from what the school had told him when he would get in touch with them on behaviors and stuff like that. And he told me I had the right to know. And he provided me with some of that information. But my mom never did. Did you try to ask her for that information? Yes, because I wanted to know when breaks were 
So as I was always trying to either schedule or talk, a lot of it was she was either going on vacation or she had doctor's appointments or Munchie was in the ER. It was kind of always something. And I also talked to Mr. Turner about that as well. And I just, honestly, I, just, I really don't know. Um, have you asked your mom about what Chase is into and about his friends and, um, you know, his likes and dislikes? As yes, gross. yes. Okay. I talk to Chase. A lot of my interactions with Chase when it's just Chase or my mom does it outside of sessions, I don't get a lot of feedback from him. It's as if he's not talkative. And again, I express this not only to my counselor, but turn to see as well as if she was leading him or he didn't want to go into certain things. Everything was either a I don't know or I don't know or no. Like he was very un un interacted with me as was in session and a email was sent out as far as chase it was believed chase wasn't getting privacy in sessions to where he felt he could speak um freely um it was that i was never getting enough time even when i was given time to talk to my to talk to chase outside of sessions through my mom those talks never lasted long it was more like 15 20 minutes and because this is somebody else's phone or she always had something else to do then i'm on her time i gave chase a phone up here when they came in July. And even to this day, my mom is, oh, well, the phone dead because he ran it dead playing Sunny. Or when Tristan and Trinity come over, I don't let him have the phone because I don't want them to take it. Or if I say, okay, well, I told Chase that I'm going to do Uno with him is, oh, well, Chase got a scouts um, meeting or he has to do this or he has to do that. It's, it's always a excuse when it comes to me interacting with Chase besides sessions. Do you see a difference in the way Chase communicates with you when your mom is present versus when she's not? Yes. Chase what, makes faces. How does, how, how does Chase communicate? How's your communication with Chase when your mother's not present? When my mom's not pregnant, Chase, Chase is open. He calls me mom. Chase tells me he loves me. Chase, I asked him at one point about the story thing. It's not something that I started and then stopped. It was something that he was very into after my mom started getting him very engaged in swim practices and scout meetings and everything else, that's when Chase said that reading these stories was for babies because he had become more active outside of her home. So we switched it to playing video games together. But he's very open. I tell Chase I love him. He'll say it back when my mom is present and I say, okay, Chase, I love you. He'll say, okay, bye. Okay. Um, have you offered your mom any uh, financial help or um, when I when I sent my mom money for Trinity's cheerleading, I didn't know what she did with it. A week later, a she second. said, hold, "Hold on a second, please." She asked you, "Have you ever given offered any money to your mother?" That's yes or no, and then you can go oh. on and on about whatever. But Sorry, answer the question first. Yes, and it, that for Chase. No, not Chase. Okay, so have you ever offered any provisions or asked her if she needed anything specific for Chase? Yes, I did. I asked her what their suit size was, their clothes size. I asked um, her to, well, I told Chase to make his Christmas live, asked what he wanted for his birthday. I told him that I would talk to my mom to make sure that we do not get him the same presents so he can have different stuff. So, yes, I've we've done, we've talked about all of that. Has she ever expressed to you um, that she didn't want you to provide some things? She never stated she needed anything when Chase got into scouts. She didn't say that, oh, well, I need help with his uniform. When Chase went camping, she didn't say, oh, can you get this or can you send me this? She, when Chase started school and maybe needed uniform, she never mentioned she needed help. She never gave me his clothes size. She never like, I'm not a mind reader. So all I could do is say it. Okay. So um, last, if, if we are, if we're able or if the department is able to have Concrete schedule, this uh, concrete schedule times for drug screening and concrete schedule in person visitation. Will you be able to facilitate that? Yes, I've stated several times I would do anything to visit my kids and I'll do anything to get my kids back with me. Okay, now you've previously acknowledged that in the beginning you weren't very, you weren't very, you, you weren't working the case plan as much. Um, mm -hmm. has your position changed on that? Yes, it changed. I've Work my case plan with Turno C. I ask questions. I've come up with suggestions. I've sent emails. I've, I mean, like, I've really 
put in a lot of work on my own pertaining to this whole situation, but I always made sure I stayed in communication. It was stated, and even when I talked to Mr. Tennessee, he said that they could not hold me responsible because the drug screens were not being given because that's something that they couldn't provide or couldn't find. He said that he was calling people, but they no longer did it. I forwarded him an email from a place after I told them about my case here about drug tests, they emailed me and said, hey, talk to your case manager. I sent him that email. He stated that they no longer do it or by the time they pushed all the paperwork through, they would no longer be doing it. So every time we had reviews, I did reach out to him on the understanding. Like I'm not understanding how I'm being, it's making it seem as if I'm being non-compliant and I'm, and I'm putting forth no effort when that's not the case. So, yeah. Wait, no further questions. Mr. Scavonic, do you have any questions? I just have a couple of questions, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Puckett, isn't it true that with regards to your lease for your current apartment, that you are only allowed a maximum of three persons to reside in that apartment? Depending on the situation, it's not set in stone. So oh, again, my question to you was, isn't it true that according to your lease, you are only allowed to have a maximum of three persons in your apartment? Yes, if that's what it's saying in the policy, then yes. And that you advise Mr. Turnipseed of that fact, correct? Correct, but we also stated that it could be worked around. Chase's seven is only so big. I think that's the only follow-up I had, Your Honor. Did you ever go talk to the landlord and ask him if they'd make an exception if your other child came to live with you and you had too many people? Yes, what I did was I reached out to ICPC process people and asked them about it. And they stated that even with a two bedroom, and I even talked to Ms. Hughes about it, but they stated that I have a two bedroom. Chase and Julian would have a room together. My older two kids will stay in the room that they have. And I have a pullout couch in the living room because it's just me and them. And it was stated that that would work because it's multiple parents that do that. Well, that's the ICPC and, and the defects child welfare rules. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. I'm I, talking about, did you ask your landlord, would he make an exception and let you have an extra person if your child came to live with you? Yes, I did. And what did your landlord say? My landlord said the same thing I just said. It could be worked around because they don't usually name children on leases anymore. So, yes, I could. Okay. Ms. Miller, do you have any questions? I do not. All right. Any redirect? No, Your Honor. All right. Do you have any other witnesses? No, Your Honor. All right. The evidence is closed with uh, defects exhibits one through four having been admitted. Um, and just, just to be clear, Your Honor, for the record, there is also no rebuttal from the department. Because you didn't ask me that. No, but I appreciate you reminding me that I should have. <laughs> so, so that I could say denied. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, all right. If y'all want to make any argument, you can submit a letter not to exceed one page long as to what your argument is. But I, what I do need from you is proposed findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm taking the matter under advisement. And um, I, can, I can discern your argument from what you put. You don't have to present a, a total order from start to finish. The findings of fact and conclusions of law, I feel like, is enough work as it is. But if you'll submit those and copy them with each other, you can email them directly to me as long as you copy the guardian and um, the attorneys. And you can copy your your clients, too. That's fine. Um, but um, I have 30 days to enter an order. So you give them to me in 10 days and um, then I'll have some work to do. Just so I'm clear, Your Honor, you want the closing in writing and then you also want myself and um mr skoranek to each provide proposed orders no he wants he was like he was joking about the letter i'm pretty sure he just <laughs> wants he wants <laughs> proposed findings of fact and conclusions of law within 10 days and that's you, it i don't want to prohibit your submitting argument i'm not requesting it you're not going to be penalized if you don't because if you take the time to do the findings of fact and conclusion i'll know what your arguments are so, but if you want to write a, a cover letter with a, with a summation of your strongest points or whatever, or the other side's weakest points, you're welcome to do that. But I'm not trying to overly impose because I feel like the, the 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 stuff that's more helpful to me is what I'm asking for. And please put it in Word uh, format, not PDFs. 
because my uh, my um, Adobe that supposedly converts from PDF to Word is seems to be getting less perfect, less never been perfect, but it seems to be with more glitches in it, and uh, which means I have to proofread it all again. Oh, Your Honor, it is a mess. Now that I do it, I cannot delete blank Word pages, and I, I it it's been driving me crazy with Adobe. Did you say you? I'm sorry. I, did you say you want it as a PDF? No, I want it as a Word document. <laughs> okay, I mean that's what I normally do is yeah. do it as. Well, <laughs> people, I tell people that, and I still get PDF sometimes, and it could okay. be they don't have it the means to send it in Word. It just yeah. causes several hours more work, for, and then I have to type it word for word and just basically be a transcriptionist. And um, I don't like to do that because I'm a horrible typist. <laughs> people hear me typing, they say, "Oh, you type so fast!" But well, you haven't seen the page. Oh no, you're. <laughs> I feel you. These, I these, these are my these are my typing fingers right here. I. <laughs> I, I did not take typing class as seriously as I should have. That, that, that's my fault. That's my daughter. <laughs> that, so, yeah, that's what I do. I, At least I'm a little better than my dad because, you know, I'll go a little faster. My dad will... <laughs> was like, Dad... Just... Okay, you'll, you should be getting uh, a copy of However I Rule uh, within a month, hopefully sooner okay. than that. And uh, in the meantime, everything goes along just like it's been going under the last order that I did in the dependency case. I appreciate it. All right, it was a, it was a pleasure, you all. I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. You all have a great rest of the day and week. Thanks, y'all. Everybody take care. Thanks for your help. <laughs>